buckets, I will say that I do have some questions. Uh, I've checked your uh, paper, your document. You have mentioned about fusy clustering algorithms, machine learning, and the classifications. But you didn't mention anything about the mathematical models. Underlying these algorithms, there, is, there are different kinds of classification, for example, right? So uh, I, I expected at least some, some brief point is about that. For example, uh, how, how the classification work? Of course, you can get the code from TensorFlow or something as you mentioned, but there are different, I, I hope you know what, I, what I'm trying to say, right? Yeah. Have you finished? Yes. Okay. You have uh, uh, as we gathered uh, signals from his head, which is, uh, as you have told you, it's noisy, and then the classification method we use here is the, da the data center from the Arduino is to about 0 to 1,000 things, uh, right? And then uh, at 0 0.5 microseconds, there are a bit of data coming to, to the Arduino. And then those data, we try to map them to uh, we scaled them down to 64 only. And then we grab those 64 data, which comes to a pair of uh, 0.5 microseconds, and then we manipulate them, like the first one to the fourth one, we manage to uh, classify them as one, and then we uh, process it, like we add it up, and then we minus the third one, and then uh, we add up the fourth one and then we get the average of them and then we get one number out at once and then when the 64 is, is downgraded to 16 and the 16 downgraded to 8. Where do you get that rationale, that step between it? Uh, as, as I have told you, it's RNA, right? RNA is uh, a recurrent neural network and it uses sequential data. So these are the sequences. You get. So the sequences are more related when they are come up with a uh, uh, bunch of data when they are coming through the argument, right? So the first four are more more likely the same. So we get the average of them, and then those chunks will be bunched into sixty. And the classification basically is then uh, for the Raspberry Pi to make the predictions. So uh, for that to happen. We acquired the analog signal and uh, as Anasimo showed you earlier, uh, it, changes it, it changes it into a binary code. Uh, that's how it can be understood uh, by the right verify. So the Arduino, uh, as soon as the Arduino sends the code to the uh, uh, Python loaded on the Raspberry Pi, now on our computer, it makes the classification as he has mentioned, it reduces it to, uh, from 64 bit to 16 then to 8 bit. To, to be readable, uh, as you are seeing here. So there are uncertainties and there are maybe some uh, wrong signals. So through the learning process, that's uh, what the machine learning algorithm does. Yeah, I understand, I understand yeah. the learning process, but there are many ways to do that. Okay, the other is about the battery, how, how, how long the battery will stay? Normally, assume you have implemented it and they give it to someone to use it. You have mentioned this in the limitation. The battery is not rechargeable. But if you change it to rechargeable, the guy who's using this amputee, uh, prosthetic arm can charge it anywhere with a 5 volt. And the total power consumption of our this project is around 13 watts only. So it is even uh, it can be also reduced if we change this uh, equipment. So the total consumption is it gets okay, from it's 20 to 30. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I have two cases regarding the law. As you know, this is my case in the research area, uh, but I didn't see any kinematic analysis of the end of this robot manipulated by itself. 
uh, if you look, the uh, final object is formed. This is picking something. The, 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 the size of the object is different. If you pick this one, you need all the fingers, all the indifferences of the robotic manipulator, right? But if you want to pick some small objects, we need only two fingers of, uh, out of five, right? So to do this thing, you need to be control the parameters, like the joints, parameters, as well as the modules of indicators. But you didn't uh, do any kind of thing regarding to the dynamics and with the parameters of the indicators, right? This is my case. The second case is based on your data, uh, uh, around 3 million people is victim of this thing, right? And then those more than 50% is in low countries, like Ethiopia. So, uh, how, how do you see from economic aspect? Is every people can buy this one? Or the final object is to produce in mass and addressing to those people. So, how do you see from economic aspect? Uh, I'm thinking this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the yeah, dynamics. The dynamics, okay. Uh, we, we are using this uh, S3003 servo motors. Those have 9 torque force value. They can rotate uh, around 9 torque. So, uh, our hand actually uh, has uh, different, in, in mind to mind it is different, but in average it is around 20. So, this can be improved by using uh, perfect wiring strings. Uh, the joints are, these are 3D printed, so this is plastics. As I have told you, if we change it to carbon fibers, it's more stronger. So we have managed, this is by the way the prototype. So if the prototype can do this, uh, if we change the variables, uh, as I've mentioned, the servo motors, we can change the servo motors which, has, uh, which have uh, around 13 or 14 torque uh, the force value, and then we can uh, change the 3D printed material with carbon fiber so that it is more efficient than we do. Even we can multiply the force of our hand by using this one. Like if someone can't open something or uh, squeeze something, it can also multiply the force we had by using this process. How many meters for this one? We can manage uh, each of the hands. Just the uh, individual and uh, after that, there are some combination of fingers and uh, there are some combination of movements. Then we can show it. The next question was economic visibility. Uh, have you ever seen a guy who has no uh, legs using a wheelchair? How much is a wheelchair now? It's around 20k, right? This project has cost us around 8k, 18,000. It's beyond that, but there are, when we change this Arduino board, uh, if we change that battery, it is more uh, cost effective. And then if we buy them in, uh, in mass, you can uh, minimize the cost. So uh, we try to minimize it as 5k around that. We, we managed to do that, but for now it is around uh, 8 or 9k, right? So uh, we, 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 we try to make it with uh, talking to others, uh, organizational and NGOs. We, we can uh, print those things. Those are really expensive. We cost it about 5k, the silly printed material only. So if we have someone who can help us on this, so we can you can do, do it around 40. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other question? Okay. Uh, in, 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 uh, did you try to design the uh, SCB? What are you? We have uh, tried. I myself tried it, but it has some. Um, there are a lot of equipment we have to use, like the frequency, the filters. The, even the signals are too fast, so you have to use a quality uh, equipment uh, or gadgets. So we tried it, but it's not that much effective. So we try to stick on the open space. Question the teacher? No. Yes, we have to see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, please. 
uh, when I see your documentation, there is no appendix. There is no appendix. You didn't put in the appendix. Even uh, the way you try, try to just uh, uh, train the scene, and uh, you didn't put in the appendix. Uh, the other thing is, uh, how, how we become the practical, the actual situation, <coughs> where, where, where the person, uh, where these all components will be? How, how, how can we get This one is printed in Addis. There are shops that uh, make 3D printing. It costs about 8 per, per gram. And uh, this costs about 7,000 in uh, 4,700. So all the components will be inside there? Yeah, yeah. yeah, everything will be embedded here. And this uh, motors will be reduced in size. And when we uh, design the PCB board, it can be integrated here. And it will be really smooth. And uh, that um, amputee can put his hand uh, or her hand into it. So that will be much easier. The other one is, these are the EMG sensors. We bought them from China. We uh, we imported them uh, through someone uh, who we know there, and uh, it was bought that way. I think it costs about three thousand here. Yeah, and uh, but there, and if we are able to buy it in mass, uh, we can even get it in a cheaper, very cheaper uh, amount than twenty thousand. Uh, the other ones are available. The battery, the breadboard, they are just made uh, by the interconnection. Okay, uh, is there any other question? I think we have another question that I have a comment. Uh, first, I would like to say uh, it's a very nice project, so I appreciate you very much. Uh, the second comment is uh, your documentation. Since, since you are an engineer, you have to communicate your ideas through different lenses. Your presentation was very nice. Uh, the demonstration is also very nice, but your documentation is quality. So I think you have to work also with your documentation. Writing a report is one of the activities which is expected in terms of IQ. So you have to communicate your idea also through writing. So try to write your report in time. Thank you. Very nice. Okay, thank you. The last uh, comment I have for you. You said basic functionality, basic function. You have to mention it. On your objective, you said basic function. Maybe some, you, you may know the basic function, but all the audience will not know the basic function. And uh, I think your, your project is going to be uh, in fix uh, amplitudes below end to right. You have to rely for the rest. And also, uh, this also, uh, try to acquire signal from the environment uh, rather than acquiring signal from the mind. It's better to uh, feel those languages like uh, temperature, temperature or something like that. And um, this is all I have for you. Thank you for the comments.
Slide presentation, you have 10 minutes uh, for the demonstration, 20, 20 minutes for question and answer, and we have 15 minutes. So I will warn you, I will notify you before we, two minutes left. And on demonstration time, I will notify you when four minutes left. Okay? Start. Hello, everybody. My name is Anta Legitajo. Today, we are going to present you about final year project and we are from Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering. So our title is an IoT based smart stick for blind person. So these are the contents we are going to cover during our presentation. We will have some introduction and then problem statement, what we are trying to solve and objective of our project and the whole, this system product diagram, the whole description about our system and then what benefits our device gives to the society. For, for our country and also commonly the additional features that we have developed through this uh, project and also there is some limitation and finally simulation and implementation results and also conclusion and recommendation will be given. So blindness, I think we all are familiar with this term, blindness, condition of lacking visual uh, perception and also it can be described as severe visual impairment. So, according to WHO, World Health Organization, more than 161 people worldwide are visually impaired. That means both uh, sight lost or blind and low vision. The under 24 million are, have low vision and 37 million are blind. In another 153 million people suffer from visual impairment uh, due to uh, refractive errors such as nearsightedness, farsightedness, and astigmatism. And in Ethiopia, Ethiopia has been to have one the oldest highest rate of blindness, which is 1.6%, and the low vision of 3.7, of which 80% is either treatable or preventable. So, our problem statement is based on the investigation about the daily activities of the blind. The main difficulties or challenge is the blind person uh, face art working on the road, finding way, and taking a bus, and also. Uh, looking for usual life area, they may be access a cafeteria or they may be going to go to something, so it's difficult for them. So, we are proposing a smart solution based on IoT that makes a weak individuals, that means in our case a blind person, lives more straightforward and considerably more effortless. And the features of our pro pro proposed system will offer its, the user opportunity to be liberated from most of their pressure concerning their movements. So, these are the objectives. Our main, main objective or general objective is 
to simulate and implement an IoT based smart system for the blind person. The specific objectives include making simulations of the design and project software and collecting every component needed for our device and interfacing every sensor, every modules with our Arduino, <coughs> Arduino microcontroller and also programming both the Arduino and SP26 Wi-Fi module. And finally, making the hardware implementation and the smart stick will be tested. So this is block diagram of our system. There is an Arduino microcontroller and we use two ultrasonic sensors to detect obstacles in front of the user or the stick. So one is placed in the lower part of the outer stick and the other is in the middle part of the lower is due to detect the lower obstacles and the middle one is due to detect the upper obstacles. And there is also water level sensor. It sends water inside the hole. So it has some threshold value and if it's above that it will trigger an alarm through this buzzer and vibration uh, uh, motor. This vibration motor is to produce a vibration. So this is very useful because if, let's assume if a blind person is also a if he cannot hear the buzzer sound. So due to this vibration, he will alarm by this process. And also there is GPS module, which tracks the GPS, the location of the user, and it will send to the King's speak account. This is very useful when he comes out of his house, when he's working through, uh, working to some fair. So, this device can be continuously uh, monitored, or the location can always send into the thing to speak once he enables the switches. So he don't have to always be tracked. As if, for example, if he's in his house, he don't need to be tracked. So these are the main components, and also this is the motor driver. This is the motor. We deliver the data, and obviously we have power supply for our device. Working of uh, the device first. Switch, we have a switch one, so switch one will be enabled, so this means it will give the power to the whole component. So after the switch is enabled, the next step is both ultrasonic sensor and both are the sensor begin to change the, uh, the environment. So as I said before, two ultrasonic are used in this state. So the water sensor is placed in the lower part just below the ultrasonic sensor. So if the object or position within the specific range of ultrasonic distance, which in, in our case we have 50 centimeter detection range from the stick to the obstacle and the water level more threshold to be from the ground above the ground up to 10 centimeters approximately the detects the last one obstacle and both the weather and vibration vibration motor will be activated to alarm the user. So meanwhile when the GPS tracker the GPS module tracks the location, this is take place when the uh, user enables the tracking system on it. We have a specific another switch for that. So it will track him, the track uh, location as latitude and longitude will be sent to the cave taker in the speaker account so you can see uh, anywhere on earth. So this is just some flow chart. It will start from giving the power supply. Power supply is given to the whole system by the switch one. So if the switch one is on, it will give another power supply to the switch two and the ultrasonic and the other sensor are enabled so they begin to sense the environment. So if object is detected, or if, uh, if either object is detected or whether is detected, both the buzzer and the vibration will be uh, on and it will alarm the user. So there is another switch here. If the switch is on, then the GPS tracks the location and also sends to the image system. If not, the tracking system remains idle. And here the switch is one is not on, then the whole system is in an idle condition. So what are the benefits of the, the device, if you ask, then it detects some stack in the water in here in front of the plant, as I said before, and this also alarms the, uh, the person about the problem he's going to face. And then the moment the data is continuously tracked and monitored by the caretaker or family by accessing the thing the speaker account, then it also increases the confidence with the blind person by forming the uh, daily activities. And a smart user can work uh, faster uh, than the conventional stick because it detects what the obstacle in front of him. So it will be faster and smart stick is lightweight, cheap, reliable, and operate with low power supply. So what are the common features that have with conventional our smart client stick? So it provides balance and support in the standing and walking. And also it takes some pressure off 
one or uh, both legs, so if you rely on that. And also it's used for self-defense, if something happens, we can defend yourself by using this stick. So additional features we added on that conventional stick or what our smart stick consists of obstruction, obstacle detection from the distance and water detection inside the hole, alarming using both buzzer and vibration. As I said before, these are very necessary things if the buzzer... You have two minutes. Okay. And uh, continuous location tracking and monitoring. This is additional features on the conditionality. We have some limitation. This is an IP event, so it requires internet connection. And this is not flexible. You cannot be unfolded or folded the stick. And it has more difficulty in reading uh, reflection from soft or carbon pins. So both, since we use ultrasonic sensor, uh, we have some difficulties due to the limitation of that sensor. Side obstacles are not detected unless the uh, stick is rotated like this. So we would touch first we add another uh, ultrasonic sensor to the side, but when we think it has post wide, it is not uh, suitable for our system. So these are the sim simulation results. When there is no water or obstacle detected, they are off, the motor and the buzzer one is off. And this is when obstacle or water detected, both are activated here, as you can see from the picture. And this is our implementation result. So when we conclude, finally the smart coating is will turn into a device that can be used to guide the blind and then test it. So this showed a successful obstacle detection in front of the user end water detection, so the device also successfully tracks the location and the to the display speaker cards. As long as the uh, latitude, it is able to solve the problems that blind people face in their everyday lives, and the program is also taking the step to guarantee their safety. So these are some recommendations we would like to give. The size of a traffic sonic distance are uh, too big to be implemented on the so if it would, it would be great if the size of the sensor is uh, reduced to fit into inside the walking stick. And instead of using Wi-Fi module, the ECM module can be used to send the track locations. And finally, additional system obstacle avoidance for high-speed movements such as car or motor vehicle is very common. It's all about my presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. You have finished your time. Now uh, the time is for the demo time. You will have 12 minutes for demo. Okay, thank you. My name is Adana. As is proven, there are uh, components which we have in. The first one is Arduino, in the, the ultrasonic, and this is the what I'm working, which is the same place. The, 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 no, no, zero. On the table. On the table. Ah, on the table. Okay. 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 It is to send the location which is obtained by the GPS module uh, to the account which we have created and this is the other ultrasonic which is to measure the distance uh, when the obstacle is low and it is used to measure the obstacle if the obstacle is upper. And there are two switches here is to on the entire system and it is to off on the GPS. So, and here is also the water level sensor. It is to sense the water level. And we have assigned the threshold 50 centimeter to measure the obstacle and the water level up to six. Uh, Thank you. 
So if you track in this track in location, you will be sent to the DTSPK account by using this uh, Wi-Fi module. In, uh, after 15 seconds, it will be updated in the account. So as you can see, it's tracking. Here. So this water is this water sensor is to test the water in the airport. So up to this it can be tolerable. So, yeah. so these are the main uh, activities that are done by the system. If you have any questions, you can. Are you finished? Yeah. So the next uh, 15 minutes will be uh, for question and answer. Okay, the floor is open for question and answer. Who is going to ask? Okay, Garama. Okay, uh, when you say account, you mean it is connected to some other server or what? It's, 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 it's to store the data from the sensors. So we can uh, visualize on that account, we can receive that store or we can display it to monitor something. In our case, its location is sent to that account. So that account is owned by the family member or the caretaker of that person. So you can uh, see the track location and find out where he is going. Right. The second question is, uh, how is the cost, I mean, how is the repeatability of this process? Yeah, when you see the cost, it's maximum up to 3,500 The component is built here. We could add many uh, sensors to detect more of the obstacles, but we want to make it feasible for the food person. So it's maximum up to 3,500 all components we need in this. Uh, I mean, for example, if you let us say we are going to give this to someone to use in real life, yeah. not the other thing that exists. So we need to do some packaging, right, on top of these wires. Yes. This. Yes. So uh, how do you think about, that, about so, the packaging so that it can be reviewed? Yeah, the packaging must be, this is for the prototype actually, it must be inside, most of the connection must be inside of the house and in the other of the sticks. So, only the water sensor saying that this obstacle detector should be outside and it uh, also the GPS needs some space to track it. So we can place inside the stick. So then, then you can produce and give it to someone to use it. Is there, is there a way to increase the, the sensor alarm sound? Yeah, by using more power supply. Yeah. So we are using 9 volts battery. So if you can give more power to this uh, device, Maybe you can use a rechargeable battery or solar based system battery. So if you can give this, then alarm can be increased and also the vibration also. And you can use another motors, 9 volts DC motor, to increase the vibration. So it depends on the cost of the device. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the last question is comment. Comment. Yes. Uh, one of the problems is that uh, the sensor is uh, it shouldn't be like that. It should be more short, precise, and pointy. Okay, we are not supposed to be everything because 80 or so, I, I don't know the research, but 70 to 80 percent is visual for the audience. Okay. Okay. Next. Okay. Uh, uh, because of the uh, fault, the object or the it gives an analog looking. Yeah. And after uh, this, the problem is solved, will the will the alarm will stop by itself? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other uh, is there such kinds of product in the market? This kind of? Yeah. No, we haven't uh, get anything like this. I mean that 
maybe for some projects they have done something like this, but we have had so many uh, features. So commercially, I don't think it's a good idea. There is the, 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 no, 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 no such like survey in the market, or Like our system? Not like we should yeah. see. Some of me, maybe there may be some of I have seen some uh, alarm system. When it takes something, it will have only the buzzer uh, activated. But not all of this in uh, one So what, what additionals you, you, you added just uh, compared to uh, in the market? The first thing is this vibration. This vibration used for if the blind person is also in this, then he can't be alarmed by this because he's unable to hear the buzzer. Yeah. And also the diffuse tracker. So if he's going out of his house, then he can be continuously moving that where he's going. Yeah. So if something happened to him or if he's lost, then it can be tracked uh, by this location. It, it can be easily found. It's the manager. And also the water sensor. It, you know, as you see here, so it will detect water inside the hole. So these are additional, main additional features. Of course, there is also detection, but other system detects, uh, other sticks also detect. So we are, these are the main additional things we have. Okay. Are you finished? Okay. Next question. Uh, yes, I have. Uh, <coughs> do you have a reason behind why you took the names of the league to this much? Yeah, up to this much. I think it can be tolerated. So if he's getting to that uh, for a, my question is for a normal person, are you interested to walk over that kind of deeps of the flat, uh, flat road? Uh, going over that? For water? Yeah, normally. For a kind of looking with this amount of deeps. Yeah. Are you ready to go over that one? For me, maybe not be, uh, because I can't see. But so up to why this you one, do that amount up to this one, person also? That may not cause uh, the person to fall, maybe. If you consider up to this one, this may not cause the person to fall or uh, any harm. So you can uh, pass through that. Harm. But if it's more than that, then you will uh, have a higher uh, chance to uh, uh, cause the person to fall. I don't think so. In my opinion, if you have no interest to walk over that road, why you do these dips for the blind? Actually, these uh, dips can be... Uh, the better thing is, instead yeah. of using these kinds of sensor, just uh, like most sensor or if you decrease the dips of the yeah, liquid, it can be very small, it's better. Yeah, it but can the, be, yeah. if you insert the road to that liquid amount, I see already this amount of liquids. So this means it covers the shoe of that blind person. It can be decreased or it can be adjusted, but it's not issue. You can uh, reduce the temperature of the body. I don't so, okay. uh, you The second it? thing is, uh, so let me, uh, the second question is, it's better to make advance instead of this one. That means uh, a kind of sensor included for this, in addition to this one, like sensing the weather condition, the fogginess, the raining, and a kind of, that device is included to build this, it's better because if the blind person uh, walks over a kind of road, if he knows the actual stats of the weather condition, it's better. Uh, there was simply uh, including the uh, distance sensors and liquid sensor, uh, it's not mean fully automatic, right? Mm -hmm. Still, he needs the support from the uh, surrounding pupils. Yeah, you are right, but we are seeing it like uh, cost-wise economically. We can use many sensors, as I said before. But if you are adding another sensors on this device, so the cost will be high. So it will not be affordable for the poor uh, blind persons, especially in our country. So if you can support them by using this, uh, I think it will be uh, very uh, good. That's why, uh, of course, uh, that's your good idea, really. If you can add that, that kind of thing, it should be good for the stick or it will be good for us, but is it affordable for the blind people? You are asking so many uh, sensors to be added on this stick. So we have to see it cost-wise, I think. That's why we try to reduce the uh, sensors. So if you can help them by this one, I think, I think it will be very good. Okay, next question. Thank you very much for your nice presentation. I try to have more than one question because most of my questions are already raised by other members. So my 
university in you, you make work very nicely on the engineering part, but the engineering solution has to come first once you are operating in the vital environment. So do you do some kind of uh, communication with the client people before we design the solution? Are you doing any communication with the client? Actually, to be honest, no. But we try to refer you know, online resources. How, what okay, kind of problem? you refer some documents from online? Yeah, we have seen what, what kind of problem they are facing. All these things are referred from online in France. Mostly, yeah. We didn't uh, refer from uh, blind persons. Yeah. So I think to make it more realistic, it will be more Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the last question is mine. Um, I think ultrasonic sensor is unreliable. It's better to use another sensor. And the um, second question is ultrasonic sensor, most likely they are, they are sensing everything. That thing may, may not be understandable for that blind person. And uh, another one is, have you tried to filter noises that those noises can be like noise signals that can those noise signals can be false uh, positive or that that are not really on circuit? And another question is, uh, I think you have uh, used IoT because of the GPS, right? Yeah, you have to say. Uh, are you? Uh, you can. I think you can also. Uh, upload some other data from sensor to, to make use of this smart stick, uh, to maximize the uh, use of this smart stick. And uh, one another question is uh, overage of service. What about overage of status? Like if there is uh, some short gates or something like that. May God put it. <laughs> and uh, another one is what is and what what about the medways like uh, as you have said you have uh, referred the document from internet but in our real environment the ways are not like this yeah. the walkways are not like this yes. some are muddy some are uh, sandy some of them are slippery so is that possible to send that to the walkway? That's why we said and, uh, Let me finish my question. And uh, the next question is um, sensing way. So maybe on the walkway you may find some way that is digged for maybe to install power or something like that. Is it possible to sense with this stick such can constructs? You, can you repeat it? Uh, way. Google, you know, like uh, to install pole or something, the, you may find some points. Uh, what we don't have to uh, forget is, it still performs the conventional stick activities. So it's going like this, right? In uh, the conventional stick, it touches the ground. So if you face some pole in front of it, so it will go inside. Then you can take it. So we are added extra features on the conventional one. That's why it can be detected. In we don't have to use that as a for that. What about the noise? Because of these uh, sensors are may, may, may sense false positives. So are, 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 have you tried uh, anything to filter those <coughs> false positives? Let me tell you based on the test we have conducted. So when we detect an obstacle or an obstacle uh, in front of the, this stick, it will detect then if it goes away from that, it will not detect. So there is no detection, what's the detection that we have during our test. So I, I don't think there, there is uh, no need to uh, filter the receiver. Have you actually read about the transmission? Yeah. Yeah. because, for example, what if you keep like, passing the bike? Yeah. If it is fast, it's unable to detect it. So it will uh, need some time. So this one, the, the transmitter, it will send a signal, and the deflected echo signal received in the time is calculated. That's based on that uh, distance is uh, calculated. Thank you. Thank you.
So it's fast, for example, uh, if, as I said in the recommendation, if fast car comes, so it needs some time to uh, measure the distance. So if car is coming in front of it, it cannot do anything. So there must be another uh, mechanism for that. For vast objects, it cannot be killed. Because it is faster than the detection of this ultra sensor. That's all. Okay. Yes. 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 Actually, the distance is measured by speed of light multiplied by the time elapsed in one uh, speed of sound. One trip, right? Mm -hmm. speed, of sound. So, speed of sound. Speed of sound or speed of light? Speed of sound. One of the that. Speed of sound. That the car moves beyond that speed? No. What I'm trying to say is, it will detect uh, obstacles. If it is fast, yeah. then the time taken for the signal to travel and to so receive and then calculate. And also, it will use to alarm that person, right? So it takes some time. So if car is faster than coming faster away, so it may not be detected. I don't think so. So if but the reaction may be uh, delayed, but the sensor sends before the car arrived to uh, that air. Yeah. But the reflection may be delayed. Um, you are out of your time. You have question and answer time. I don't know what, uh, how we can win on this one. Simulation just for me. Anyways, we can consider this simulation as um, as if it is part of your demonstration because of you have demonstrated yes. your uh, project within a short period of time, so you can consider it like five minutes.
please. Uh, virtual terminal sensor number 1 sensor number is ultrasonic one and this is the water level sensor and it's initially zero and bank freezing and decreasing the potential resistance you can see it Okay, uh, uh, welcome uh, for the slide presentation. You have 10 minutes. So, we just try to finish uh, your presentation in 10 minutes. When two minutes is left, I will, I will notify you. And uh, for uh, demonstration and the simulation, uh, you have 20, uh, 20 minutes. And I will notify you when four minutes is left. And uh, for question and answer, we have 15 minutes. So, start. First of all, I would like to thank all of you for this golden opportunity. Uh, it's such an honor to stand in front of you 
for visually impaired people. Uh, blindness is uh, a lack of visual perception due to uh, psychological or neurological factors. 83% uh, of our environment information are gathered by visions. Uh, this is the reason that vision is the most important thing uh, in human. that we are initiated to do this project in order to help the visually impaired people uh, so that they can move uh, freely uh, or independently. Uh, so our objective is uh, to design a smart stick that can detect uh, the obstacle, uh, the stair, both uppercase and the down stair, uh, water uh, or moisture of the floor. Uh, and the other thing is uh, to differentiate uh, whether it is a day or night. Uh, so we have used, as you can see, uh, we have uh, used uh, an Arduino sensor, uh, an Arduino controller, uh, LDR sensor, uh, two ultrasonic sensors. Uh, these both uh, two ultrasonic sensors use uses to detect uh, a hole, uh, a stair, uh, an obstacle, and upper and lower uh, uh, staircase, uh, for example. Uh, this uh, this sensor, ultrasonic sensor one, uh, senses an obstacle uh, at uh, 50 centimeter or uh, less than 50 centimeters. Uh, this uh, detects a hole uh, that is greater than uh, 50 centimeters. Uh, we do this. Uh, we construct this uh, because that uh, a standard stair is uh, a around 20 20 centimeters far, uh, so that we, uh, for the if the stair is uh, 20, I think uh, this one is uh, from this to this one is uh, 30 centimeter. So that uh, if the hole is greater than uh, 50 centimeter, it detects as it is a hole, and it gives uh, a better sound uh, for each cases. Uh, it gives a different uh, better sound uh, so that to notify the blind people. Uh, in our case, in our uh, system, we have uh, six uh, different cases. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the obstacle uh, sensor, uh, the obstacle sensor is uh, an obstacle at uh, the distance of uh, 50 centimeter. Uh, if it is yes, it gives a buzzer sound, a certain buzzer sound uh, to notify the blind people. Uh, in case two, it senses a hole, a hole greater than 50 centimeter. That means when the hole is greater than uh, 20 centimeter, uh, this uh, stick senses senses it as it is uh, a hole. In the third. Uh, case is uh, a upper step. The upper step is uh, sensed when the when the obstacle uh, sensor senses it uh, less than 20 uh, centimeter or 30 centimeter or 50 centimeter, uh, and the upper step uh, senses it as less than 30 centimeter. It's it says it as it is an upper step. Uh, for example, let's say uh, this is. A step. Uh, so this obstacle sensor sends it as an obstacle if this less than 50. But when this one uh, reaches, uh, since this one as less than 30 centimeter, it sends it as an upper step. Uh, so in order uh, to sense a down step or the, when the distance measured by the ultrasonic sensor reaches uh, below uh, 50 and uh, between 30 and 50 centimeter, it sends it as a down step. But when uh, the distance, uh, the distance is uh, greater than uh, 50 or uh, 20 centimeters, it seems that it is a hole, for example. 
Now it is uh, since the the water on the field as it is a uh, ball. So we have a uh, different uh, sounds for every uh, six uh, cases we have used. Um, therefore, I think uh, this uh, this uh, we give uh, every uh, manual for the visual impaired people in order how to use it uh, and uh, where where the button is or example the switch uh, the switching button is important. So to start it uh, in the in the future, I think we will use uh, uh, a motor, uh, motor uh, vibrator uh, in order to notify if it is started or not. But now uh, we have used an LED, uh, an LED for uh, to show you that it is on. But in the future, we will use uh, a motor vibrator. Now it is a normal uh, level. Uh, the stick is at normal level. It doesn't change anything. But for example, if uh, there is a darkness, uh, this one is the uh, LDR. It is a different uh, buzzer sound. That's all. Thank you. What about the slide? Do you have a slide? Okay. You have still for the you you, uh, you have three three minutes for the time. Have you finished? Yeah. Yes, it is the same as this one. But okay. we wanted to see how is she. Go to the energy part. This is the methodology part. As I told you earlier, uh, it uses uh, two advanced sensors, uh, one switch, uh, and uh, we have used a battery, uh, a rechargeable battery, nine volt rechargeable battery. Uh, uh, the method that we give to the Arduino is by just plugging by VCC, but uh, if you want to plug it as this one, as we know, uh, this, uh, this part and it's a 5 volt uh, voltage. Uh, we use a voltage divider, a voltage divider for it, but it is not necessary. We can directly give it an angle. Uh, and there is a buzzer, sound, uh, a buzzer connected to the Arduino in order to generate us or to give the, the user a different sound. And uh, the, the other thing is the water sensor connected to the Arduino, uh, to any one or any one. So the other one is the LDR connected to uh, the Arduino. So this is uh, the case that uh, I took the area. Uh, there are six cases. Uh, first, the obstacle sensor. The obstacle sensor, atlas sensor, one uses as obstacle sensor. Uh, if, if the distance is between if the distance is between uh, less than uh, 50 centimeters, it sends it as it is an obstacle. Uh, Atrasonic sensor two, uh, in order to sense uh, it is a hole, the hole uh, must be greater than uh, 20 centimeters. Since uh, 20 centimeters is a normal uh, a standard uh, state uh, distance, if the hole is greater than 20 centimeters, it sends it as it is a hole. Mm, in the, in the two uh, parties, the two uh, cases, the third case and the fourth case, uh, are upper stair and the down stair cases. Uh, it sends it by using the two sensors, uh, the sensor that faced downward and the, the, the sensor that faced forward. Uh, by using these both uh, in combination, uh, we, uh, we tried or we have done 
that two things a down step or upper step and that the fifth like in this, the moisture sensor, the moisture sensor is a moisture at, uh, at the floor. Uh, we can, uh, and the other one is the LDR sensor. It's used uh, to, to differentiate uh, the dayness or the nightness. So, uh, our little, like, as you can see, our little this one, this is just our the adjustment sensors, uh, we have this a 9 volt airport tree, there is a user, as I showed you on the methodology part, uh, we have used uh, all uh, that we have mentioned earlier, and uh, this one, the cost, uh, the cost of our uh, project, it takes uh, a 2,500 to okay. start it. Yeah, Next uh, is demonstration time. 12 minutes for them. Are you already going to demonstrate? Okay. Let's go to a question and answer the session. Now the floor is open for question and answer. Who have a question? Okay. considered as noise for the kids. So if this is not loud and uh, suppressed by other signals, uh, because you are not coming with vibrating lines of motors, so it's better to include uh, airphone to hear the audio signals that comes from the outputs of the controller, right? That's better. This is my comment. The thing you can is very good. So this is all about from my side. Yeah, I think you already addressed my question. Uh, my question was uh, what you decide on the six cases as you uh, make it in the presentation to include only the six cases in the project. Why do you want to make ten cases or more than ten cases? Because there are so many uh, functionalities that require by the users from this device. So why do you decide? Uh, the reason that we have decided to do these six cases are uh, these, these six cases are the most important ones. Uh, How about fire? If there is a fire in front of the, the blind person, does this uh, stick that person? No, it, can, it can't help it because uh, it can feel uh, a fire or other things, but uh, the possibility that it gets to the fire, the fire is uh, very less. Uh, in, uh, in order uh, to uh, use this uh, stick, it doesn't use uh, any internet supply uh, frequently, uh, and it, it doesn't use uh, any frequent uh, supply of power, uh, power, so that it can be uh, applicable everywhere around uh, a countryside, or we can use it everywhere. So that we uh, fit these uh, six cases, uh, so that it is the main and the good a reason uh, to move to for the uh, mobility system. Okay, next. Uh, my question is uh, about the whole sensing. Uh, it senses the work after the in actual scenario, I mean in practical scenario, we like the people who is working with me, uh, they send it in front of them. If there is a work, they will be able to insert and they can, in, in current conventional work, they can know more or less. Uh, but this one is current kind of in certain distance, or what makes it more significant? It seems it at a certain distance, uh, that is, uh, for now we have used uh, this, uh, this uh, 
distance uh, to memory. Uh, and uh, not only after it is inserted, that it senses, mm -hmm. it senses uh, remotely uh, at the edge of the uh, sensor. Uh, but sometimes, sometimes uh, when the people close, uh, maybe they, there is a downstairs, they don't know if, if it is a hole or it's a downstairs. And they wait, they just return back or to the, so that this is the best thing can differentiate whether it is a hole or it is a downstairs. How about to differentiate by sensing the distance? By sensing the outside area, if uh, this uh, sensor is planted at uh, a 30 centimeter away from the uh, level of the floor, uh, when the, for example, let's say this is, uh, let's say this is a so it the distance, and the distance, distance is more than certain threshold. Okay. Is there any other question? I have uh, one question for you. Actually, two. Uh, your title says a smart talking stick for visual impaired people. Does it qualify as a term smart project? Of course. Smart means in my uh, in my understanding, the stick has to learn with something like right? smart when, when when you say smart. But there's no learning ability, right? Mm, what do you mean? Have you used some machine learning that for instance? Yes. 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 Some rule based. And uh, so I think uh, the, term, the, the term smart may be not appropriate for this project. You have to modify the, you have to substitute that term by another term. And then, you can say advance it or, or you can advance your, your stick. Right. And uh, another one is what if the walkway is slippery? It is possible to, to sleep by mallet, in my other sleep by because of maybe sand, because of uh, water or something like that. Maybe it, it takes the moisture points only, but uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't indicate any sleep by rules for the people to notify. It just uh, changes the moisture, the moisture level of the floor. And it gives uh, some feedback that it is the floor is the moisture or the floor is wet. So the it, city it, it will not identify this, the slippery way, right? The slippery water, right? Yeah. And the, another one is uh, since you have used the battery or reserve, it is, I think it is rechargeable. And uh, is it a mechanism to notify the user to uh, when the battery is low? Uh, when the battery is low, it just stops. So it's, it just stops when the user is using that stick some, somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So it's better to notify, like when the battery is um, less than 30%, it's better to notify the user and the user can charge it. Yeah, Normally, the battery is today, but it can be it, I don't know. I know it is rechargeable, but the stick has to notify the user to recharge it when it is less than some percent. Otherwise, it is uh, difficult to, if the battery stops in the middle of the way, right? Yes. And uh, one last comment is your presentation uh, style is not like the previous group or not. It is below the standard. You have to present in our points. We have expected that one, I think. So if, even if you present it as poster, you have to make it visible. It is, it is uh, invisible for us. Okay. We have done?
¿Es ese el que llamaron? Ay, 
this is actually connected to the artificial kidney, to the top of uh, the dialyzer. And again, this is a venous line which the blood actually gets out and gets back to the patient. So, what this basically does is, uh, as you can see here, there are fine lines called the membranes, which are, are actually the same as uh, the real kidneys. <coughs> so, basically, the blood is not going to get connected or uh, be related to the tube. It, it only gets to the fine membranes. And as, you, as I said, the dialysis solution or the mixture of the artificial kidney, the artificial urine, uh, is pumped up through this uh, outer tube. So this creates a, a concentration difference between the blood and the solution. So what it basically means that there is ammonia in our blood, right, when it's not pure. So it means that there is a higher concentration of ions. So this means there is a concentration difference between the dialysis solution and the blood, which means that in the principle of osmosis, any kind of ions move from higher concentration to a lower concentration. So as this uh, dialysis solution moves up through the gradient and the blood moves down through the gradient, there is uh, a symmetrical uh, relationship between the concentration difference. So there is always a movement of iron from the membranes to the outer uh, solution of the dialysis solution. So this is the ultrafiltration uh, tube that actually cleans out or sucks out the uh, purified or the dirty urine or the ammonia, you could say that. So <coughs> this is the basic function of the patient blood circuit as I've shown you here. So the second circuitry would be the second circuitry will be the dialysis solution. The dialysis solution begins in the middle of uh, the process. As you can see, there are pumps, there are inlet pumps which uh, facilitate the input of uh, many solutions <coughs> to be mixed in this mixing chamber. So basically, there are three solutions composed of uh, the dialysis solution. The first one would be the bicarbonate solution, the second one is acid concentrate, and the third one is uh, a distilled water. So, this three mix up and create what? Create an artificial urine, which is called the dialysis solution. So, this is heated up and sucked out through this uh, outlet pump or the <coughs> dialysis pump, as you can see here. There are three pumps. So, the dialysis pump pumps up the, dial the dialyzer and also <coughs> removes it through this ultrafiltration pump. Now, on the outer side of the dialysis solution, there is a blood leak detector, as you can see here. So, as I've said, the solution and the blood are never mixed together. So, if blood gets through this tube, that means the membrane is not functioning well, or it has rupture. So, this device you can see here alerts the medical professional that uh, the dialyzer or the artificial kidney should be changed and stop the process immediately. So, this is the second uh, circuitry. Uh, the third one would be the power supply unit you see here in the control circuit you see here and also the main of the brain of the, the machinery it is here and as you can see here this one is the alarm. Actually the alarm is con uh, composed of two uh, mechanisms. The first one is sound and the third one is a written statement displayed in the screen. So basically, this one is the third uh, and final uh, system circuit. So now we will see it in action. Uh, the machine already started. So when the machine starts, it it pulls the result printer. The amount of we, uh, the amount of we fluid to be removed from the patient. That is, if it is one kilogram of fluid to be removed from the patient, it takes to efficiently uh, diagnose the patient. It takes one hour for that one kilogram. So, it, uh, we need to enter the amount of weight to be removed. For example, if, if I enter one kilogram from me and the start, I push everything here, the machine starts to work. So now the machine, here we have a pump. As you see, it starts to pump. Here we have the pump. We have the dialysis pump. And there is also a conductive sensor in the equation sensor. Because the conductivity is needed because uh, the conductivity must be maintained for the dialysis to be uh, implemented effectively. And the other is 
also a pressure sensor. The, the, the pressure needs to be constant all the time whenever the, the machine is in operation. And the other is, as we have said, there is an early uh, blood leak detector here. The blood leak detector is done made from an LED and the LDR. So as you can see from here, uh, the dialysis solution uh, goes through, through this tube and comes out of this. There is a, there, the, a blood comes through this and uh, goes out through this tube. So, uh, if there is any blood leak uh, that comes through this tube, the LDR and the LED will detect it. Yeah, yeah, the blood they shouldn't come this way. It only go back. It must be go back to the patient. For example, if there is, and as you can see, there is no blood leak. But no if blood we leave it, I blood from here. As you see, the alarm will be start. The alarm will start and the machine stops working. And uh, the display will be. The display will be blood leak detector. So the blood shouldn't come on this way. It only may, it must be go back to the patient through these tubes. So there is not to be a blood. So the machine has now stopped working. So we need to change this dialysis. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the dialysis is only used for the single person. It's not uh, uh, disinfecting for other person. It's only using for time before one time of doing this. Because of this, if there is a blood still here, this you see it's only ultra filtration. Um, and this ultra filtration is only the dirty water can be coming here. If there is a blood, there is a blood. This is because of, if there is a single drop of uh, a blood from the patient can be removed, maybe the person, the person that can be dialyzed with this, maybe it can be to the, the disease because cannot be in the human system in the, uh, because of your kidney is not to be generating the blood circulatory as a normal person. Because of this, this uh, blood linkage is very sensitive thing for the satellite reservoir. And also, for the entering part, are, there is for the entering part or arterial parts for, uh, the, for the patient that entering into the blood. For that, that blood is for the clear, clear, clear. And the only part uh, in doing here is only the solution. This solution are coming from the bicarbonates. As, as, as uh, I mentioned, there are three uh, bicar bicarbonate. Uh, cell solution are there yeah, because of shortage we have uh, didn't uh, get uh, bicarbonate solutions. So solutions they are but we are going to using other ones. Oh, no. yes. oh. no. the, the patient blood circuit is moving the blood through this and actually it moves through this way and, and moves through this line. And you can see it is moving and since this is not connected to the patient not <laughs> but as you can see here this is moving up downstream to the dialyzer and as you've seen here the pump actually pushes the dirty dialyzer and the dialysis solution will come as well. So this basically is the solution for the process. Solution the solution is the
Uh, so, the artificial kidney is not part of the machine or is not sold with the machine. So, basically, the machine only costs us around four five thousand per Yes, of course. Out of this tube and this dialyzer, yes. each of us. Uh, we, we, we made it. Yeah. 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 So the forecasted cost would be around twenty to thirty thousand, uh, holistically speaking, because uh, there are many safety measures that be that should be uh, implemented to, into the machine. So basically, what we've done here uh, needs only minimal maintenance or minimal modification. So. The additional safety measures would cost us uh, a bit more, so 20 to 30,000. We, we are already, already using uh, some parts of the basic, the basic thing is that are completely using for the lead machine. But some of them are modification. They are very 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 Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Of course. Um, we have been contacting a nurse uh, in Saint Paul Hospital, and also uh, there is a lecturer here who actually maintains the dialysis machine at Saint Paul's Hospital. So uh, he, we have been in close contact with him to uh, ask him so many things about the machine. So he's not actually our advisor, but he has given us. He is giving us technical support and also uh, guidance when making this machine. So he was uh, very satisfied with what we have done. Actually, there is a conductivity sensor, and also the pumps are calibrated so that the, uh, the exact amount of fluid they, they, they give in one minute is really calibrated. So, the exact volume of the mixing chamber uh, and also the temperature, the conductivity is controlled through the, the, the mechanism here. So, uh, all the three pumps pump the, um, the required amount of volume in a specific time. So that is heated up, and the conductivity checker checks if the uh, solution is perfect for uh, treatment. So this basically is the function of the machine. My next question is, uh, is there any precondition to be uh, you this device for that patient to start checking the actual starts of the patient? Oh. Yes, yes. 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 It doesn't test that one. So in fact, the real machine doesn't that either. So uh, let's say that I'm uh, a person if it, uh, diagnosed with CKD. So I have come uh, to get the treatment after three days. So the, the amount, the, the amount of waste that, that, that I have accumulated 
is measured through a scale. So I would go up a scale. So the, the hospital has my previous data. So after I I I I, I was measured by my weight. So they would make the difference and give that data to the machine. So the data is uh, the, the data the machine accepts that data and it calculates itself in accordance with it. It's better to include that one also because uh, the, the one to buy this one is not uh, educated maybe. Yes. So the margin sense those things. My second question is uh, how do you check the flow rate of the liquid within this pipe? I think it, it should be constant. Once yes. you drag the pipe to the patient side, yes. then the pumping device pump with the constant flow rate. Yes. Yeah, we have tried to calibrate the pumps. The amount of doing the amount of fluid they are pumping. How do you know that amount of flow rate? At a normal condition, there is a constant. Yeah, it's constant. So, I think it needs some calculations. Yes, yes, yes. We did that in fact. That is incorporated in the software. So, the diameter of the tubes are known. The capacities of the pumps are known. So. We tested it, we calibrated it, so uh, if we uh, open the pumps, we would know that in one minute, how much fluid is getting there, how much is the pressure, so everything is set in the software. Okay. There is no actual hardware. Any other question? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Very significant use of specials. So uh, the fact that you talk of these problems by itself uh, speaks a volume. What I wanted to ask is uh, how, how is the packaging? Uh, eventually, you need to package this, right? Yes, yes. Uh, yes. To go to the, of course. So, yes. Uh, how, how, how do you do it? Actually, that's actually a very good question. So, as you can see here, this uh, solution is for the presentation purposes. So, the machine will be <coughs> excluding these uh, tubes or the patient blood circuits, uh, and uh, there, there will be encapsulation above here. So, we, we remove the upper part of the machine so that we could show what's inside the machine. So, <coughs> basically, this device you see here should be on the outer part of the machine excluding the artificial kidney and the patient blood line. So, uh, after encapsulating this uh, machinery on the top, this would be basically the, the design of the All the tubes you see here are one single use only. Yes. They are single, they are, they are used only one by one person. Yeah, so they can be removed to any part of They are all removed. Okay. Next question. Mm -hmm. um, the last question is mine. Uh, you have said that first, before starting dialysis, the um, session and the stop has to be put amount of people. Yes. How, how do you know that amount of people? Yeah, when the patient first goes to the hospital, his weight is measured with the first step. Then, after it has uh, they are going to be treated with a place uh, uh, by the machine. Then it's also, it's where it's also measured, then the return. Then when it comes to the next, uh, after three days or two days, they check, they measure the, the current, that time weight in there, uh, compared with the last weight. And they put that uh, difference. Yeah, let's say that I'm 60 kilograms right now. So the first time I go uh, to the treatment center, <coughs> they would measure me, right? And they would see, they would check some other vitals to see that if this is my normal weight or I have gained some unnecessary fluids. So the first one would be testing it, and after the first one, I am, let's say that I'm 60 kilograms. So after two days, when I come there, all the liquid I'm intaking so is not going to come out. So I, may, I might gain two kilograms. So I will be the 62 by the, by the time I get there. So. Just making the difference and doing that to the machine. Now, is that the point of vision? I calculated by the nurses or by the physician? Either way, why are you planning to Okay, uh, next one is, uh, 
and we tell the world with the energy of the energy consumption of the source of the power. Because it's mainly what source. The power uses, it mainly uses AC. Yes, AC. And we have tried to convert it to convert it to DC. And we have used some components to convert. What if while the dialysis is underway? What if uh, there is a power cut? Yes, since there is oh, a uh, battery that is stored in the power, uh, the machine. Backup battery? No, uh, for a little bit, there is a the backup uh, and there is uh, a huge. Um, so the dialysis will not be interrupted? Yes, for a little bit. Yes, for a little bit. Yes. In fact, we do not implement that part, but we have mentioned it in our documentation that the future work will be uh, to incorporate. Since and why it's is difficult, uh, like, since it's portable, mm -hmm. that patient may, need, uh, may not get uh, 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 um, constant uh, yes. supply, like maybe he needs to connect this machine to generator, that yes. can manage by himself. Yes. Uh, since, uh, how is that we get from verify is mostly dirty? There is a power fluctuation. Yes. That can damage the machine or the gas may be there. So you have to think about the power needs. Yes, very much. We also don't have uh, any battery. Uh, it only works by backup generators. If, uh, yes. any, uh, if, uh, if there is a, a power cut uh, from Alpha, the backup generators will not that one is that in that case that is uh, placed in the disease uh, hospital yeah, yeah, but yes. this one you yes. have said yes. 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 so if the patient may, may install this machine at his home yes. Yes. there must so be a battery in two storage there must be power issue yes. the power at the, the power we are getting at our home is dirty power right yes. so that dirty power may affect the functionality of this machine it yeah, might affect the, the functionality of the machine, but uh, when you think about it, this machine doesn't require that much power. In fact, it would perfectly work like this projector is working right now, because uh, the components required to do all the, 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 machine, the functions of the machinery... When I say functionality, uh, you can consider, you can understand like this, it may damage the, the, the machine, or the dialysis may be interrupted because of the power issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Since portability, when you say portability, there is a power issue, especially mm -hmm. in our country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about that. And uh, it is a multidisciplinary project. Have you considered uh, to uh, invite one student from knowledge or any other? No, we have not. Mr. Parkins, the project? Yes. Yes. He's a biomedical engineer, so in fact he did his first degree in electrical engineering and his master's in biomedical. So what about in the future? Are you going to rely on him or you are going to
we concern we we see we see that we win automatic for uh, for making reading using only only reading games sending the uh, data not controlling the 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 system but but our our projects monitoring the systems and this is a project. As you know, the electron devices are required a power supply, which is uh, a DC power supply. So uh, we try to convert the AC power supply into the DC supply by using electrified. Uh, here uh, there is a Flow sen uh, water flow sensor, which is used to sense the amount of water that pass through it, and then uh, it will measure the uh, the volume the volume of the water that pass through it, and also uh, the flow rate of uh, uh, the water. Uh, here, there is a accelerator which is used to uh, control the uh, the flow of water depending upon whether the customer is paid or not paid. Uh, uh, this flow, uh, water flow sensor is work with the principle of uh, parts with modulation. When the water is passed through it, there is a, a turbine inside it. The turbine will rotate and it will generate uh, the pulse with generator, uh, generator, pulse with, uh, pulse with generator and then the signal will be sent into uh, our microcontroller, which is uh, Arduino Uno. Uh, uh, the Arduino Uno uh, will get the data from uh, water flow sensor as input and it will calculate the amount of dirt uh, that is consumed by the consumer by, uh, as in a current, uh, in our current issue, uh, one meter cube is around six, uh, six dirt, uh, six dirt, 30, uh, 30 and it will calculate the amount of water consumed by the, uh, the user. Here there is a medium between the user and the station. Uh, here, uh, once, the, once the amount of water consumed by the user is calculated by the Arduino Uno, it will send into the station using uh, 25 days of uh, the 25 days of uh, the month. And it will, it will also send uh, five day as a tolerance and five day as a warning. Uh, so we use JSM uh, uh, new as a communication between the station and the, the, you know, the station and the, the user side. So, uh, Yeah, first of all, thank you for giving me this chance. And uh, the chapter one presented by Lenny, and the literature is presented by Bina Magara, and the diagram is presented by Emmanuel. And I'm going to present these parts the user size simulation results. This is a general simulation block diagram. And this is a simulation result what we have designed for our general system as user size. Here we can see here this is the user side SMS uh, cellular monitor uh, display and this is general, I mean, the signal generated from the sensor this is our water flow sensor and this one is how the SMS uh, is, uh, takes place and this is a station side simulation also the results in a station side when uh, the order or the user paid its uh, amount of money of the water consumed and this one is the when the order is not paid the total amount of money is not, uh, not completely uh, equal to zero or greater than zero and this one is the database that we have designed to store the data and this is a uh, handy uh, stored by the operator by seeing or observing the, the uh, actual uh, sms this is the overall uh, design internal part in the I mean the internal part of our system, the electrical part here. Sorry, and you are finished your standard. Now the uh, the session is uh, for demonstration. So can uh, you have any anything to show us here if you are going to have some vision simulation?
totally we have 20 minutes for uh, demonstration. So how many minutes we are going to take for simulation? Now it is starting the simulation and uh, it's uh, been and te testing the uh, signal or whether the water flow into the pipe. It is checking now whether the SMS is coming from the session. Now it is almost there, zero water, it shows zero water flow the, through the pipe and it uh, demonstrates here flow rate is zero zero. Uh, we have uh, already reset this one to calculate the money because. Now it is going to generate the signal when the water flows through the system. And this is uh, generally works based on the Hall effect. That is when a turbine or uh, a slow, uh, flow, uh, a current flows through a conductor. When measure that at the conductor, the, uh, it shows uh, zero voltage. But when a magnet field uh, approaches the conductor, the ions uh, line up together and the uh, positive ion line up at the top and the negative ion line up at the bottom that uh, makes the diff voltage difference then it will uh, give us the signal uh, as a form of a voltage uh, I mean pulse width modulation when we increase the, the pulse frequency it increases the water flow uh, rate because the speed of when increase the water it increases this uh, flow. I mean, the first counter that we have designed to calculate the frequency. We can see here, when it increases the pulse, it increases the flow rate. And when it decreases the pulse, it uh, decreases the flow rate. For example, we can see here, from 200, uh, from 380 to decrease it to 189 milliliters per second. And this one is checking we can abort the system by sending SMS, like for example S, it will uh, change the total the system to zero or the actuator is, uh, I mean the solenoid is activated and it, so it uh, tells us the SMS is coming and the line is out of service. Now it is uh, checking the whether the SMS is registered. Now it is zero. It tells us because of net fade, the line is getting out, and this totally here shows the uh, SMS module, the total amount of volume and the tariff that uh, must be paid per per meter cube. For example, this is the one one per per meter cube, and it tells us the total uh, how to order or how to control the actuating system, and we can send here P. To, act, uh, to activate from the uh, station side. Now it is paid, the solenoid valve is reset and the uh, water days, uh, I mean warning days are uh, re uh, resetted and the terminal is resetted. Uh, what makes other different is just controlling the system after five days and uh, the system is automatically calculated and only to make easier the data acquisition for the system uh, for the operator only can log the data, the total, the final amount of water in the 
consumed uh, I mean the total amount of burn and consumed water. Here we can see the dates and the tariff, the meter cube, one meter cube, and the total main is sent into the system. So finally, uh, it's activated through the JSM module. So we have to say to the question you when the sediment is water is following. Uh, yeah, I think we have to go to the it's better to see in yeah. what is the real pipe. Yeah, it's better to see the real pipe. Mashi lab is my kind. Mashi lab? How can you mashi lab? I don't know. 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 Okay, uh, I think we will see the, that one when the lab is open after lunch. And now, if there is a question, the floor is open for question and answer. Mr. Uh, <coughs> thank you for the presentation. Uh, my question is, this is uh, going to be implemented at customer site, right? The idea is this is the customer side, the meter. Yeah, customer side. Customer side. Its idea is it will be placed at the customer side and send the bill to the local authority every time it is needed, maybe by weekly. So the idea is to avoid uh, the person who comes manually to send the bill. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So uh, you demonstrated the GSM, you said you will use GSM data transmission, right? So have you demonstrated that? Uh, no, right? Yeah, because it is not easy yeah. to get permission from it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, but well, so the, MS, the SMS notification is not demonstrated. Uh, so why do you pick the GSM? I mean, now we have a lot of technologies, right? 
what's the rationale? I'm not saying it is not the right choice, but I wanted to know what is the. Can we start the project uh, prototype? Our, uh, it will be permitted. They said it will be permitted, but after finishing it, then. Uh, uh, the permission of the, the permission side, yeah. I am okay, okay. But we have just the, why you use GSM? Because it can be transmitted for long distance, for example, village and uh, different areas. Three G can do that. Four G can send long distance. Yeah, but the four G also needs a GSM type. It is, uh, changes to uh, GSM moves uh, time compactly. I mean, the system trans to transmit the data. That's uh, to be, I mean, that uh, code modulation is a system that will be used uh, by that. Okay. Uh, actually, in my opinion, GSM uh, is cheap, right? You only send data reading text. It's not video, it is not uh, something big data. So, cost wise, also, GSM is effective uh, and inefficient compared to the others. The other is uh, how the compactness of this when you put it at customer side. It should not be something huge. We are not going to put some in size at customer side, right? How, how, how will be the compactness when you do the proposal? Because, there is oh, because like this, uh, uh, I assume it will not be appropriate to put at customer side compared to the current metros there are. Yeah, it can be compacted. Since we used the breadboard to like some as a prototype, it becomes a, no. oh, when, this, a, in, when this thing is out, eventually it is supposed to be packaged. So yeah. But uh, mm, I, th I think little difference with the actual now. Okay. But uh, we will design for a practical test as like lunch box, lunch box type for electrical part and for mechanical parts. But a uh, small size, a little difference from the analog that is currently used. Okay. Yeah, this is my question. Okay. Is there any other question? Okay. Uh, this kind, is, is this kind of service available in the market? Is available? Is there any more? No. No, it can be reached. Yeah, there is not. No, it's not available. It's available. It's available. Are they using this? Without actuator, I mean, without the same that can control it, it's available. Automatically, with the meter, it's available. With this? With no controlling mechanism. It's available. It's almost the best in that power metering system. It's like that. It's available. It's available. This is uh, implementing this uh, control in the analysis okay. because we use the SLM. When the customer is not uh, allowed to pay the amount of work, it will cut out the system. So, uh, so the same thing is being used only to be installed? Yeah, it is. It is a single user? Yeah. How do you consider that? It is a single user. Then compared to the manpower needed for the manual GD, this one should this cost is less. Maintenance cost is in addition to the meter, so it's an amazing reason. So if, if there is some errors, uh, uh, misuse of cylinder, so, so you see, maintenance cost is easy. Also the, main, the, the technical person has to be there for every for every person. How do you continue? Totally the, the budget, the, the cost. Yeah. Yeah. Total cost. Yeah. Who owns it? The customer, right? Who will going to pay for this when you are so the customer, right? Okay, okay. Or maybe compensated by the utility company for uh, selling on. And uh, of, uh, of course, there is an error still uh, from the data acquisition. When you compare the data acquisition system and the wastage of the water, it is safe for the utility company uh, to compensate the value and reduce the end selling system. When it sells for the user, it can reduce um, when uh, we see the uh, when we compare the currently requesting water and the data system.
problem. In the user side, I think I, I do have a doubt. It may, it, it's not easy for the user. Maybe the misuse of the, uh, every time when there's a problem, it has to be maintained. And it may be uh, a little bit difficult for the user side. But we can deliver a manual code, but we can miss control by station. The user is just to take the system and we can use it. But the control part is controlled by the station side. Because he has an knowledge about this. And can we can be prepared a manual here how to operate the system? I'm sorry, it's not the system. Okay. Uh, let me add uh, one or two more questions uh, to my colleagues. Uh, my theory is how can you handle the data that you receive from the customer side? Mm -hmm. Because you read each and every, every time, right? So you take those data to the central database. Then how can you handle those data? Because you have, if, you are, if we are assuming you are the organization side, so where they have a number of customers, right? So each data is coming from that side to the central area. Then how can uh, you handle that data? Maybe the guy who comes from computer may help you, but that was my fear. Uh, actually, this is a design for a single user only. This is how we put in the challenges and questions. You have prepared the database. No, we are not assuming. If we are, uh, if you are doing this thing, this is practically implemented for the end users of that organization, right? Yes. So you are, you are plan only for one, one, one job. Uh, it's difficult to uh, to say this is uh, research because when we are assuming uh, this is implemented for the community and the organization needs to be. Uh, Cost from this one. Right? Yes, uh, we have prepared it, uh, database, the database. When it comes to, uh, it's it's data because every time you recap the data and store to the central area, then you are going to be multiplied uh, the mentally recapped data by the rating of that organization, right? Yeah. Then finally, you send for each end user the total cost mentally paid. Yeah. No, the total cost is done by the Arduino, the first Arduino. No, Arduino is controlled. Nothing mean. No, My fear is how can you handle the data that comes from the end users and calculate it and finally send the signal or the information for that user? Yeah. Uh, the system only uh, calculates the total amount of uh, water and the total amount of volume uh, meter cube and the total many. Only it sends the many in the volume only. And directly it can be logged to the database. Uh, Maybe I can support the demonstration technical point of view. I mean, from the feasibility. Uh, actually, back in the data storage is as different techniques. For example, with your telecom, they collect a lot of data from all of us. But after one month, they have backup system to dump that data into. And also, there is different technique to compress those data to, to resize them to smaller size. So, for example, if there is some controversy after two years, those data should be legally available, right, for users. For example, a user may say, I have induced disease after two years, let, let us investigate. It is a system designed by itself. I, I, I honestly think it is out of the scope of zero work. So, there are different redundant data centers in terabytes of storage. So, uh, I think it, is, it, is, uh, it lies outside of the Okay, let's say uh, like that. Uh, the second thing is, uh, I think it's you are used to measure the flow rate of the liquid. One sensor, it's case sensitive. If something is coming with the liquid, because you are not filtered that way, it cover, then it's not measured proper reading, right? Uh, and also installing those sensor in each end user is costly. So. How do you see it from the economic uh, side? The economic should be seen in uh, by comparing with the current system. Means that it, uh, the manpower needed, time needed, and uh, with, when we compare with uh, the current system, it is more efficient. 
and then we have uh, calculated the proper total cost. So, I've left one more. I've left one more. There's only the filter. No. Okay, let me ask one question. Uh, do you believe it's a very important issue for us if you take a data survey from the end users? The, the, the problem is they are not uh, got enough, enough water uh, in Delhi. If, if you take uh, those villages for one week, for two days, or for two weeks, they didn't get enough water. Instead of doing this research, what I recommend is simply by uh, applying distributed control systems, you, you, can, you can monitor the, the distributions of water through that city. I think the problem is getting uh, not in the water for every household. Payment, paying something is not a very important issue for the end user side as well for the government side. Yeah, we are seeing that as uh, it is constant. I mean, the resource is important. Okay. Next question. I think all of my questions are already raised. Maybe one question. <coughs> It might not be a question, but I need a clarification. In your answer, you said the authority can control this matter. How they are going to control it? Because they are removed, the station is remotely located. So how can they control it? It is controlled by the program. That is, there is a net payment that they have paid, and there is the measurement and the bill came from the user side Arduino and the station the station side program will compute that or the difference is computed in the net payment minus does this machine need uh, an internet connection or is it this is JSM okay yes. is that your proposed solution to make the main station with this one? yeah so the waiter for it can send Command to the unit. Yeah, when it becomes negative, the order becomes not paid, and that is sent to the user side. The line will be cut. So they can send instructions. Yeah. Turn off. yeah. Okay. Uh, I have one some questions. Is it possible to configure the the meter while from like uh, remotely, like the um, Cost of the water per meter cube, or to stop the water from that user, or something like that. Is it possible to remotely uh, communicate with this <coughs> configuration? Wherever uh, there is a network, um, you say the, the meter will send the reading data to send around. Is it possible to? configure using a mobile phone, using by sending SMS or using from, from the remote server, is it possible to configure the meter? No, that is because uh, it must be secured. This so control action should be taken. Okay, next one is, uh, assume that you have deployed site type of meter in thousands. It's how you are going to identify one meter from the other one? All meters are uh, going to send data every 25 days, right? Yeah. So how to identify the one meter from the other one? There is a meter code. On the, when it sends, it is sent with a meter code. Okay, meter code. And that will be saved to the database. Okay, good. And uh, uh, regarding the database, which database you are using? MySQL. Huh? MySQL. MySQL. And whenever uh, a new data is sent to server from this specific meter, are you going to create a new row, row or a new column? It's huh? It can create a, um, as much as possible. So we have a column, column or yeah. new row? We have created a column. Uh, yeah. Huh? You have for additional user? No. Assume that this machine is registered, this meter is registered, and uh, 
it, it is communicating with the server for a year, for, for example. Then, for next year, when it sends data, are you going to uh, create a new row or a new column for that specific data? So, actually, data with the machine ID, with this customer ID, only, and yeah. with customer ID. That means meter code, uh, which is connected with meter code. The customer ID will be the data. Yeah, like meter code. So For identification how, how, how of each customer. How we can know that this, this uh, specific payment is September, October, or some is. is it September or is it October or January? I think there's a payment type. Your database is, uh, it needs. Yeah, some work.
What I do, what I do, da da do, da da do. What I do, what I do, da da do, da da do. What I do, what I do, da da do, da da do.
So, me and my teammates are really glad for being here today. So, we believe that we have solved many problems regarding the, 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 the issues we have seen in our uh, society. So, we have uh, proposed our uh, BCC, BCS, uh, BC, BACC project regarding obesity detection and uh, customer relative issues. So, what really motivated us to do our project is that, as you can see, worldwide traffic around the world, uh, traffic accidents has been increasing rapidly throughout the world. And uh, for your concerning, that uh, WHO has reported that 
million people has died just because of this car accidents worldwide. So when we come to our country, around uh, 15,000, 34 car accidents has happened just in the last year, the informed uh, report that we have gathered. From those data, 30% of it has been leading to this, meaning that around 5,118 people have died last year just because of the car accidents and 50% has led to injuries, uh, more than that. So 95% of that uh, cause was uh, violating the, uh, vi the violation of rules and regulations. So uh, from those 95%, the main cause was ru uh, rush driving. So rush driving or over speeding of cars was, the having, was having the main uh, cause for car accidents to happen and 5% of it was the external factors. So when we come to our factors, from the data we have gathered, as I said earlier, rush driving was the main cause for many car accidents to happen, and uh, other uh, critical problems have been uh, rising just uh, just after the the car accidents have happening, like uh, families losing their relatives, uh, mothers losing their child, and ma uh, many other problems have arisen. From the age, from the WHO uh, report that we have gathered, the age from 15 to 29 are the most uh, affected young age of this car accidents, meaning this most young, uh, younger age are affected, meaning that once country's development are in the hands of those young age, so losing those kinds of people leads to uh, countries not to quickly develop. When we, cause to, when we come to the damage uh, in our country, around $400,000 is just damage or the waste of the car's uh, accidents only happening. So how was the current management system working? As, how do, as we know that the current system is working just by a traffic man needs to stand in one specific place and needs to track it by using a handheld gun rider. So it checks if a car is over speeding or not just by uh, putting a traffic in one place. So this, and uh, in a, to penalize the driver, it needs to observe what's happening in that specific place. So it needs to check if the car is over speeding and then it's penalized the driver. Uh, in customer side, uh, so customers just complain to the traffic by getting face to face to them so that it needs to uh, report those illegal stuff to the traffic. So this is how the current management system works. So what did our proposed system uh, bring as that? It's has an OptiKS tracking system, meaning that it doesn't need any traffic man to stand in some place. So our system live tracks if your, uh, the car is over speeding or not in just another region. So it detects the over speeding. Uh, it tracks where, from where place to where uh, to what place it has been over speeding and in what region it has been over speeding. So it's, uh, those old da the data are recorded into our system. So it's easily uh, recorded and maintained. So any uh, traffic man can scan your place number or your driver name and just get Goes, uh, can get those uh, recorders from those data that has been recorded and can be penalized. Uh, when we come to our anonymous complaining, customers are uh, customers complain anywhere at any place anonymously, meaning that without any kind of fear or any kind of uh, they don't need to wait for a traffic man to complain of what illegal uh, actions they have been uh, that they have seen, or so they don't need to be. Uh, Physically face to face to the traffic, so they could be they could anonymously uh, tell what illegal issues they could uh, transfer to the or inform to the traffic man. So this is generally how it works. So in our project scope, uh, mainly our project has four scopes. So registration. So in in order for our system to work, every detail needs to be registered in our system. Road information, car information, policies. So every detail must be registered into our system. When we talk about detection, it detects the over speeding and the regions it has happened as complaining. The customers can complain the uh, using our management application and recording. It records and maintains those cars and drivers' history. Uh, when we come to our limitation, basically we have uh, one specific limitation. So that limitation is that we don't know the cause of what makes those cars over speed or the vehicles to become in uh, over speed uh, situations. So we don't uh, consider that. So our project objective is that mainly our objective is to design and develop those uh, platforms, our platform and the management system platform using to minimize those rush drivings so that such uh, people could safe drive and could go home safe and come back to their homes.
uh, when we talk about our significance uh, basically in the speeding, rush driving, uh, our system would totally slow down those uh, rush drivings in the society. It keeps the society or guarantees the society to be uh, safe when they are using any cars transportation. Penalty, at the, it secures that uh, reusement of uh, receipt of their penalty cannot be reused in other traffics when they are penalized. And recording, it tracks the penalty frequency, how many times you have been uh, penalized both uh, by uh, your fault so you have been done. So we have listed some of our functional requirements. So some of the functional requirements are overspeed detection, life function, meaning that customers can freely talk to the operators and the operators can assign traffics to those uh, customers and uh, complain about any kinds of illegal action they want to respond. Maintaining record, uh, complaint collection, notification, it notifies any overspeeding or complaints are from the customers or from overspeeding of the cars that I have detected, user management. And uh, penalty frequency, we have driver's license earlier. It has their own label, so it frequ frequently counts down those penalties. Car management, like it manages the car's information, like their place numbers and others. Session view, it views all the live sessions in our system. And environment interaction is that it connects with the license giving schools so that they we could provide their license numbers and others. So this is more about that. <coughs> Thank you, Andy. You are voting tonight. Let's move it. Outside, this has been in the video. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me uh, show how, uh, how we implement in the meters end. The technologies we have used is the implementation. This one is the first of all, we have developed three mobile applications. This one is the first application which detects the car speed and the input to the space car operator around that region. And this car operator is this, uh, considered as a hybrid system in the car, in the car system. We have implemented in a mobile, in a, uh, as a mobile application with full of its functionalities. And here, here, as you have seen the meeting, here it shows the uh, current speed of car is moving on, and it gives them the speed in the car so you know, as the car is the fastest speed that are going here. And uh, here is the speed limit, the current speed limit is going on, and uh, here this one is the maximum limit of the speed limit that the car should, should, should run. The maximum limit of the speed limit is the current speed limit return to. And this one is this one is the car system. And okay, sorry, you have finished your presentation time. Now next is uh, demonstration time. Mm -hmm. This is demonstration time. Okay. 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 
This is uh, the user's uh, app, uh, this is a second application, or second application, user's application. This application is intended to, for the users or the drivers to complain for the uh, unsafe services and this complaint, these complaints are goes to only the specific operators. For example, if the complainer or the user is in, uh, in Adama, this complaint goes only for the Adama operator, for the specific operator, for the Nintendo operator. And it has also the, it has a means of talking with operators, talking with traffic, traffic and other things you demonstrate later on, the, on that thing. And And this one is our traffic, uh, our traffic application. This is used for traffickers to, to view the cars over speeding and coming to them and for record, the new recorders and to uh, see the, uh, the driver's details uh, or the car's details and how the uh, car was driving. If the car was over speeding while coming to the traffic, traffic it shows the path with, with, with respect to the speed and the time limit. And other applications also display here, we will show uh, as the last one. And also at the office level, we have three virtual offices. The first one is operators. Operators are intended, as I have told you, intended for controlling the things around you in the exact decision. For example, over speeding and the complaint management and other things are monitored by the operator. For example, this is the, as the real time, we, the, what we have tested in the real, real life. Unfortunately, the internet doesn't work for us right now. But we have tested in real time, real life, and we have uh, records of this data. And let me show you from here. And this one is the car's speed, as I told you. On the white plate, the, the current car, the car moving speed. You can uh, demonstrate with this one. And that one is the maximum limit the car should, should run. The maximum limit is there. And the one thing is under the, the speed, is there, is there, this is the, there is an information here. This is a cell information, please be responsible. It gives information for the driver. And also here, it shows overspeed detector. At this time, it reports to the overspeed to the specified operator. And that operator can, uh, can deliver this thing uh, to the traffic, and the, those cars uh, in traffic can make pairs, and the traffic can follow, so can see and follow everything, every movement, every move, uh, speed is, and everything about the car. He can uh, track and uh, he can change the cars immediately, and he can record also you know, on our platforms. And uh, here is a. You can, you, you can uh, compare the current speed and the real speed are also over speed with two things. And this is what we have been. And the one thing we have we need to show you here is and here. Here is what I what said around the speed. Even though the speed limit is at please uh, try to run under the speed. It gives information. In real time, where we uh, record the outside of the environment, it is actually around as the super. So it gives information, every detail about that. Even though the search is uh, allowed to, to run on this one, on this but due, due to regarding of the experience or other things, it shows information to limit the speeds and other things. And this one is how, how it shows. And this one is what I have told you, uh, told you before. There are two operators which are waiting for the overspeed detection during our cases. This, this car is around in the, this region operator, but this, this is another region. So when over speed, it, 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 it is directly reported to the, this region, to this operator. By identifying and detecting that region's operator, but my virtual and automatic car, it reports to him. But it's the, the, he is no he, the car is in this around, so it reports to this one, it doesn't report to this one. The complaint also goes in the same way. And even if uh, another thing is, if there is a traffic in that environment, it shows over here. So we are we, we, uh, planning to show you that thing is actually here, because it's uh, simple to show here. The traffic show up here with the drive, with the customers they are going to, with the number of customers they are going to take and number of cars they are going to take with the, with the, with the respective number of respective they are displayed. Then the operator can simply assign for the lightest uh, traffic or the, for the, uh, relatively for the smallest, busiest traffic. The traffic, then the traffic and the cars or drivers and the users mobile mobile make pair and every information in real time transfer to the traffic okay, and he directly sees uh, what is going on in the environment. He is a mobile user, he is the two persons are already over here. You can check it how it's going on. Check the report. Huh? Check the second part of the world. Mm -hmm.
first one. And it's so neat because this is how it's focused in the in the still. And as you have seen, it is the light detecting the specific region and the reporting. This one is how we are uh, as a over speeding, we directly take the driver. For example, if, the dri if one driver hits uh, somebody and uh, wants to, if somebody makes uh, some traffic illegal and wants to escape from there, it registers all. If, it direct, uh, if the, somebody is trying to escape from the car uh, after doing some illegal, he, he tries to escape. He, uh, the system is uh, specifically detects and tracks that driver. Even though he changes the car and uh, drives another car, he, he reports that car. He specifically detects the driver who driving the car. To do that uh, techniques, we have implemented this one. Before the car starts moving, he should have to assign who, who is driving that. The person who will assign that is the driver based on the, the owner of the car based on the driver's confirmation. And this is that one. So as you have seen, here that that one and here is when the, the customers are complaining to the internet subscribe, let me directly go to the end. This two. Here, let us show in detail and demonstration of how it's uh, detected. This one specifically is the uh, one region, the first operator region. Uh, we were planned to show you in different operator regions, so this one is not working. So let us continue with this one. For example, the, the, he is going to overspeed. He is going to overspeed in the car in the simulation part. And directly this will, this will come here. And you will see how it works. We have got from four minutes. Four minutes. Let me wrap up in a simple language and we will demonstrate more in the here as you have seen. The complaint is already received from this region. That's not on the one you can, you can see. Here. It is on this region. So the complaint is come here. And the traffic courts also come here. It's not connecting, I think. And it will, it will come here. Like this will be detected. As have, you have heard that will be the sound. It says over to be detected. And it, uh, the image will be loaded. It will show up here. Due to the, the rendering of me, it can't show up. Due to the internet connections, but here you have your, as you have the reason is, is void. Even though the, the operator is working or well, even though the operator is working in another another things or busy with other other things by other things, the operator it grabs his attention. And the, the second one of the technical view which we have done is this region as we have looking there, it is a small region around there. But this is the region we take a sense about 50 times of this region. But effectively, it's uh, effectively to take it in this region. But in case, if the, you know, as you have looked at this, is the, I mean, uh, circle thing, and for, to cover the, in the middle uh, vacancies or the middle and non assigned regions, we have made it to, to 50 percent. So 50 times as well. As you have seen, the traffic is over there. On, on the, this is traffic. There are reports that you have seen, it is one car is to him and no customer is assigned to him. Let me assign this car to him, the, 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 the traffic office, when we assign like this, it's already received. Just uh, now the traffic report also detects that, that thing, we, have, we will show you. And let me fastly pass to the customer, he will show you, it actually makes pair. And in the customer, when the, uh, let me compare this customer to this one, when I click, it, it, it gives me like this one, and when I click here, 
as well as the distal shootings and we see these two stakeholders are already paired. So this strategy can, can uh, track and see that things are going around, around the bar as well as around the customer comprehensive app. And this is what we have written in small language, in simple language, and in my view. The existing as, as she is present, in, even only in Ethiopia there are 15,000 of accidents that happen each year. From this, about 5,000 of them are uh, leading this to death. Even if our system uh, 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 reduces this, to this one by 50%, around 2,000 to 30,000 people will be saved in life. Rather than also in uh, about 50 to 60 percent also received the physical, the serious physical injuries. So if you see this increment, that is maybe saved for uh, us. We have made analysis. Uh, even if it's saved about 30 percent, it goes up to so 3,000 around. Uh, it's saved 3,000 around. Uh, when it's saved, it is not only saving their lives in the accidents, but in, in the same way, saving the economical damage or cost uh, coming uh, consequences in consequence of this one. And also the, the medical costs that are uh, wasted during the, to recover from this damage also saved during this one. And about greater than four hundred thousand dollars in, in American dollar in Ethiopia damage due to these car accidents. Only this car accident is due to the bigger overspeed detections, as I should have said. But if this system implemented, if, even if it is lowly or poorly implemented, you can save up you can save up fifty percent of this which means. 200,000 dollars, greater than about 200,000 dollars you can see. So this system, system, when we do this system, we have used only our, uh, the knowledge users that we have made. So you have finished with time. Now the floor is uh, open for question and answer. And uh, we have 15 minutes for that. Okay, Mr. Garo. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, actually, you work clever several times. But I have some questions. Uh, the first, uh, first question is not that much that we have. You mentioned the cost saving in dollar. Why? You collected the data in September and converted to dollar? Or yes. What, why do you need we, uh, we do it primarily for the uh, thing of inflation. Actually, as you have noted, Ethiopian's, uh, Ethiopian's money is inflating in high, in high rate, but the dollar is not inflating. So to, to show that, we have made important yeah, considerations. Because I also saw some errors. Yeah. For example, when it notifies that, the speed is detected, the voice is in English. Right? Yeah. It is, uh, you took that from internet or it's to local person? No, we because have. Because it is supposed to be local language, right? Yeah. First of all, we make it uh, by AI readers. We read it and we edit it with the classical regarding this. It is edited actually. Okay. With the AI readers, we, have, we wrote the letter and make the AI application to read us later and we use it for this, like this. What's the pattern between working with the Thank you. We have used memory stack as overall for the web and the backend process and for the mobile one, we have used the Java. a number of operators assigned for uh, different regions. The operators are assigned by the system admin, which is actually the accounts are implemented. The, due to the lack of the time, we can't show that. But uh, for example, this operator is only sensing this region. This region only. Yeah. I think thousands of operators. Of course. For Adisaba only, we can assign 10, 15, or whatever the number of operators are feasible, looks feasible to that area, we can assign. And the setting is also applicable. We can, we can edit the operator's region. We can maximize the, um, the operator's region or minimize all other things. For also, we can do that. And also, for the, for the, even for this single region, we can assign the second operator, another operator. Also, we can assign. Or we can minimize the region. Everything is very flexible. 
the intended authority can use it as, as he wanted. You can maximize the minimum and other things also can be done. Basically, hardware is installed on the car. Yes, of course, on cars. Yeah, that's excluding ambulances and uh, other related cars, mm -hmm. like uh, authority and cars or uh, like prime minister's cars are not installed on them because it tracks their speeds. And ambulances, uh, those cars are not intended to be controlled with uh, such like problems. So, they don't uh, receive this necessary installation. But the normal user, uh, normal uh, individual society uh, must install this one in the cars application. Let me have one question for the new platform. Uh, actually, the platform is very nice, uh, but my help is in order to implement this thing, uh, all the users of this platform should be on the internet connection. Yes, this thing, this, such things are controlled by the internet connections. The thing is you have the thing cleared over here are done by internet connections. What about the driver side and the traffic? Thank you. I, I was not mentioning this thing in this question. And for example, let me let us say the driver in, in rural area which there is no connection, internet connection or other things. At that time the system, even this mobile phone coming to the this takes us a buffer, catches it. When he gets internet, he shows up for the operator and the traffic office with their regarding time stamps at the time they have committed. And another scenario, let me repeat another scenario, even there is a holiday score at night when there is no traffic and operators, he records and takes this. He re registers the cars in the database. Accidental when traffic uh, I mean, scans the car's plate number or the operator one no, driver's QR code, it displays what he has done before. Even if one driver, for example, you drive my car today and overspeeded, and next day you take your own car, even if you port it. So yesterday, by this disease, the machine just uh, omit the overspeed. He uh, goes by this speed, where is the overspeed limit? He, 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 he implemented all the things, he recovered. So, by doing this, how can we reduce the total accidents of car? Because this is only for penalty. Yes. After two days or three days, that will have been released. It's for all the tenants, but the intention is to reduce the accident. Exactly. So at that moment, we need, uh, you need to be sent the signal for that one, or information. You are over speed, so you should decrease the speed of yeah. the car by this person or some kind of thing. Yeah. He, he already, by the way, he have uh, alerted the driver at the bottom of the, uh, I mean, what, that, what does it mean? At the bottom of the mobile phone, and also by sound, it it, it takes by sound. You are over speeding. Please just pull a bit. He he talks. And the other thing is, even though the speed is uh, when he try to, uh, uh, I mean, closest to the speed limit, he rises. You are reaching the speed limit. Please pull down or slow down. And he he rises. He gives the information with the sound also with with, with the text also. He gives it. But this thing is when we come in the car, it is uh, connected to the the car's uh, screens and. Uh, as a, uh, he displays that all he works exactly as the same way as he is doing work here. <coughs> Those all things we have, what I have told or you asked him, we have already been uh, you check it in the real life by renting the cars and uh, checking it like this scenarios. We have already done that, like this way. Thank you. Okay. I have uh, some questions. Uh, first, uh, what is the title? You have said uh, you are used to the term customer. I think. Uh, in, uh, it is better to use uh, the term passenger rather than customer. Customer is generally uh, every, uh, every user that is going to, be, to get some service is called customer type. For transporting service, it's better to say passenger. And the uh, next question is uh, over speed detection of the customer service platform. What we have seen so far is but it's all about your speed. Is, is there any customer uh, service or passenger service part? Yes, it, it, this one is that one. It, it is requesting the services. Yeah? It can play, it can, uh, I don't know, it can write the application. This one can complain for about the services. He is a customer for the number. He can talk with the issues to get services. And also, we start because we can realize this. 
In the fact technology, because our system has a number of transactions within this item even. So we have chosen Mongo MongoDB database and we have posted the database on their own atlas. And the currently is working from the official their own database. And this link is our hosted link, link we have hosted here in Ethiopia. As per se, it's Fatun, Fatun is our project as well. But the database is actually implemented on their own official server. Thank you. This system also supported some kind of payment issues, but uh, I didn't see any kind of uh, functionality related to that. And at the same time, also, in your documentation, there are so many testing that have already done in the past, but I didn't see any of the payment. So, in that case, it's not done in your documentation. Have you finished? Yeah. Actually, payment is not in the market, you have to ask a future work. As a platform, we, we will create a means where the pain or the admit the traffic is illegal. We, we will create the way directly from the way he can record directly from his, his bank account. And other things also in the future, we have another thing is the way he, the car automatically, the way the system automatically uh, breaks, catches the brakes, auto automatically breaks. For example, on the the here's the on the road thirty kilometers per hour the speed limit. If the, the driver who is intended to drive about more than thirty percent, the way the the, 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 the car itself or the system itself makes out of a break in the future. Another question: Why you have three different types of applications? Okay. The one is the one, uh, one the application for traffic police, mm -hmm. for traffic police. The other one is for users and drivers. The third one is uh, considered as an uh, application or the hardware instance in Zaka. So it is it's not possible to build one big system, a big web system that can be accessible with different privilege for different end users? Actually, that's the same thing. But even though those things are three applications and the three web platforms are also there, they are working as a single platform. We make it for the civil system. I, I hope you all know awareness about the civil system for load exchanges and other performance issues. It is available. So you have made it such like but the back end is a single button for the such old things, for the six system colors. Another thing which is not yet clear for me is the detection. How do I going to detect the screen? Is there any special hardware that you are going to deploy on the driver's car or I was expecting this question to you. First of all, as you have noted here, we have we are using the Google Maps platform or Maps platform API, and as the time it sends this latitude and longitude, we measure the speed, what speed is going on, and to detect the region what it, it looks like. For, excuse me, let me ask only open the how we are. This is. Okay, here is the road's information. We have we have registered here so, uh, in the system. As we are looking here, those, those, those roads are their own speed limits. By this mechanism I have told you earlier, but using this mechanism, it compares with the maximum limit of this road. For example, if I click this road, as you are looking here, it is about what 30 km per hour, I think, yeah, it is 30 km per hour. And this is related with this information. This information is related with this road. And the other one is who crafted this design, this road. Is that that I mean also registered as a, a document just to just clarify other things in future. So this one to clarify, this, the speed is also the speed detected here. My I mean written here, given to him. And the information related to this road is also given here. By means of this. By uh, relating to the longitude and uh, by, by comparing the distance. So there is no hardware, just from yeah. the distance, the speed of the car will be calculated. Exactly. Yeah. But, it is just, uh, but it is very accurate as we have told, shown from the gauge of the car and it is very accurate in real time. Also. My final, uh, my, my comment is it's, it's, it looks like you have covered the team. Uh, the, how is 
uh, interesting, very interesting. But when we come to the demonstration, it is disorganized uh, to presentation and on the demo part. It's mm -hmm. not organized. Did you feel that I'm touching that phone, touching that PC? Almost uh, half of the time is wasted by switching between devices. So you have to think about this in the future demonstration. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
etc. Slide presentation, you have 10 minutes. You have the uh, room for demonstration, uh, you have 12 minutes. And uh, for question and answer, we have 15 minutes. Uh, before, when, in doing the uh, slide uh, presentation, we have two minutes left, I will make five. And uh, during the demonstration time, we have four minutes left, I will make five. Now, if I start the uh, presentation. Chapters, uh, introduction part in future, uh, design and analysis, result in discussion, and also the final one is conclusion and the recommendation. So, the first one is the introduction part. When you see the introduction, uh, five fighting is uh, five uh, fighting is a crystal, a, a crystal and a, a risky job. Uh, a firefighter must be able to reach uh, to that risk quickly and safely to extinguish the fire. This project gives the design and data of uh, the design and idea of automatic firefighting robot, uh, which contains a flame sensor uh, for DC motors, a uh, water pumper, and uh, the Arduino uh, one node uh, for uh, my, uh, using as a microcontroller and the motor drive. This is the uh, fire, and then the uh, firefighting robot extinguish the uh, disaster of the fire. As you see from the figure. Uh, so, uh, when we go back to the objective, the general objective of our project is to design and implement the A5 control robot that uh, avoids obstacles by using Arduino microcontroller. And uh, the, uh, our specific objective is. Uh, to design and development a low cost uh, uh, and uh, a, low, a low cost and uh, sufficient firefighting uh, robots and uh, to design a robot that's able to uh, avoid the attacks and detect the fire and next automatically extinguish the fire and the next one to determine the uh, use of multiple sensor for various sensing on the robot and to reduce accidents uh, to save human life especially in uh, firefighters who are uh, exposed to higher uh, uh, exposed to danger by the extinguishing the fire and uh, our uh, problem is stated uh, under uh, these uh, conditions uh, that is the first one is fire means all firefighters are uh, vulnerable to this in the course of uh, their uh, daily routine firefighting and the next one is the red time uh, to the user uh, takes to extinguish the fire uh, and the uh, next one firefighting firefighters have difficulties uh, on detecting the small burnt area also locations that are to risk by the user 
So what is the significance? That is the significance of our, our study or our project. Uh, this study provides for reducing for disasters uh, in our country and uh, direct time, uh, direct time the user takes to extend the fire and fire condition. So. So what is the scope of our study? Uh, our scope is uh, to submit suitable uh, material to develop the robot and developing a program, uh, developing a program necessary to develop the mechanism for the robot and uh, the potential of the fire uh, fighter robot at during extinction leveling. And these are our scopes. So just uh, recently. Let me see the methodology part. First one, we see the method, how we collect data and uh, how we implement our uh, project. The first one, uh, simulate our work. The first one, we have uh, reviewed literatures, documents, internet, and uh, videos and magazines. Then the second one, collect data from those materials and from experienced persons. And the third one, identify the major components of our, our project or our project circuit. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the next, select a suitable circuit, uh, a suitable material to develop the robot and developing a program necessary to develop a mechanism uh, for the robot. And then it starts. Uh, And the next one is implement our project uh, based on uh, the simulation. And finally, we have tested our uh, work, whether it works by uh, running our project. So uh, the next one, this is the circuit diagram. Uh, we, to, uh, we, we use flame sensor to detect fires and send this information to the microcontroller. And uh, the microcontroller uh, receives the digital input from the flame sensor and uh, sends this to the, the motor driver. Uh, to the desired place and to uh, extinguish the fire by using the water pumper which uh, sprays the water in, in order to extinguish the fire and uh, we use uh, the same module uh, which is used us to uh, uh, send the information to the receiver uh, the, uh, whether the presence of the fire is existed or uh, the, uh, whether the fire is exist and uh, we use the 5 volt uh, supply uh, for the Arduino, uh, which is uh, common for uh, the supply for Arduino, and the 9 volt battery for the motors to drive the vehicle. This is the flow chart, uh, as, you seen, as, as you have seen uh, from the uh, slide. The, uh, our uh, program uh, is starts to uh, run the motor. The motor and uh, the flame sensor detects the presence of fire and uh, sends uh, uh, and sends to the microcontroller as, as I have explained earlier. When there is a detection fire or when there is a presence of fire, it's, uh, it's, uh, it stops uh, the motor uh, and sprays uh, the water uh, and uh, extinguish the uh, fire. And also, if there is no uh, a detection of fire, it's move and check also the process continues like this and uh, the GCM module is uh, sending the information to uh, the receiver when there is uh, a presence of fire and uh, send this to the receiver uh, a distance of uh, fire detected police uh, check uh, we have used uh, this uh, uh, materials the first one as you know uh, for uh, my uh, for uh, uh, the overall control of our uh, uh, circuit and uh, the next one flame sensor this is the input uh, for uh, the detection of uh, fire and the next one servo motor which is used to uh, rotate 180 degree uh, to uh, spray the to, uh, to spray the water from the pipe and the motor driver which is used to uh, used for the uh, driver uh, of the four wheels of the vehicle. Yeah, and uh, the next one, DC motor, uh, and the next uh, mini uh, 
This is submersible pump. This is a type of pump which is worked inside of the uh, tank and uh, pumps the water and pass through the pump. The, the pump. And the next pump, the board, and uh, so Connecting the airs and you see. Chapter 4, uh, chapter four when you see the result in discussion, uh, our design of the uh, firefighting uh, part of the robot design will be this one. Uh, this is a set diagram for the firefighting robot. Uh, the, these two are the LD2 and NCD uh, drivers in order to uh, drive the four wheels and the water pumper. And also uh, at the middle, it's, uh, there is a servo motor which is connected to uh, the microcontroller and uh, receives the information. And uh, when, the, uh, when there is a detection of fire, the water pump sprays the water and it's connected to the servo motor. And the servo motor rotates this uh, water, uh, water, water pump in order to uh, rotate 100. Uh, in order to rotate 180 degrees left to right to uh, uh, for the better extinguishing of the fire. And this is our prototype. So we see that our result is uh, as uh, on the figure and uh, previous, uh, on the previous day, uh, the control circuit at the, at the top of uh, this slide. And the result we see that uh, the uh, the detection of fire or the presence of fire uh, is uh, extinguished by or automatically extinguished by the fire fire the fire our uh, by our mini project and uh, we uh, okay, so so we are finished with the presentation plan now the floor is open for administration.
Just six minutes so far. You have six minutes. I was used to question the answer. You uh, configure that one outside and you come back, okay? After the, the next group is present, okay? Now the door is open for the question and answer. We have 15 minutes for that. Right. You show us a kind of robot. 
that is the technology is already available somewhere. So why do you need to design an answer in firefighting if you would like this one? If it is the technology is already available, you can buy it from the market. Okay. Uh, firstly, our project, uh, as I mentioned earlier, our project is designed to uh, minimize the cost uh, to our society, and this is the main, uh, uh, this is the main motivation to uh, implement this project. And as one is, uh, the, uh, as uh, the figure shown, uh, it's working on the vast uh, fire, or it's, it, is, it doesn't uh, extinguish. Uh, uh, mini or small burnet area. So uh, this one uh, goes uh, goes to uh, that uh, that destructed area and uh, extinguish that simple or tiny uh, fire. That is our motivation to design this project. So why did you to make it uh, that customization to make it like this? What kind of thing do you modify? Uh, what part of the firefighting robot is modified? The first one, uh, it's uh, small and uh, uh, it's, it doesn't uh, consume a large amount of area, and uh, also it's easy to uh, uh, it easy uh, it's uh, it's uh, it doesn't have a complex uh, circuit or a, a complex implementation, uh, and uh, also it's uh, uh, freely movable. These are the main ideas or features we are we are in this project. The second question is, it is a firefighting robot. Uh, do you know what the characteristics of the robot? The robot has to interact with its environment very nicely. Okay. So uh, does the robot have that kind of interaction with the environment? Can it sense the environment? Then can it react to the environment? For instance, uh, can, it, uh, can it ask how to go to the location of the fire? Is there such kind of mass fire mechanism? Okay. Yeah. For that, first we decided to make the atlas missing that that the text is of such that, that is in front of the object of the robots, what we have created in this. We have tried that it's the complete not support or that the the aim of this project of this of this. You know that in our country, or in the world, there is a fight, fighter car that is driven by the driver and it takes the passengers. That passengers are firefighters. Our robot is the, the uniqueness is it also drives itself and it goes to the dangerous place also and it, it saves the life of. So how can it find the path to the path? If it is a self-driving robot, the robot has to drive itself. How can it find the path to go to the fire uh, This is our recommendation, or, or it is our feature scope, which means uh, the main uh, idea of recognizing or uh, uh, the or uh, or detecting the uh, the presence of fire area using by using GPS, it can be easily. Uh, detected the place and it goes to uh, that place or that place may be the desired place to detect the fire. So that is uh, our future scope and uh, it may be used as satellites or overall uh, local area network interaction and that may be difficult uh, uh, to implement uh, this short time. So it's our future scope. It is a mini project. That the main project is advanced to this more advanced level by adding different things. Okay. And it is a Okay. Thank you. I have one question. You you mentioned you are GSM module, right? Yeah. You know, the Where did you use it? Okay, we use it for one purpose. Uh, we use a GSC module. Uh, uh, we implement uh, the GSC module program. Uh, yesterday because uh, the, our uh, examiners recommend us to uh, send information to the receiver and uh, uh, which, which, which main purpose is to uh, inform the increasing of the fire when it uh, uh, sprays the water and it extinguishes the fire when there is a, uh, when there is a vast fire it detects uh, the receiver and increases the amount of extinguishers like that that's the main function we are asked.
The main difficulty to change the information that uh, battery uh, is from earlier, or uh, the battery or the source is maybe was for us because we didn't get the battery in order to save battery continuously, in order to use continuous battery this time. Yes. So you so you use this actual SIM card? Yes, actual SIM card. And SIM card? Not as a module. You inserted the SIM card. Yeah, yeah. The working SIM card. Yeah, yeah. 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 This design, the implementation, but you inserted the SIM. And the uh, receiver SIM is coded, to, coded at the program. And the uh, inserted SIM sends information to the receiver phone number. So in that case, it is not necessarily the SIM module. It is, you just uh, use the apparatus, yeah. I mean, like our phone. You understand my point? Yeah. Yeah. Use our, uh, we use the module as, uh, as, 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 as phone. As phone. Yeah. Yeah. Has, yeah. When you say phone, it has a complex uh, circuit. So this is the only the JCA uh, module. It sends uh, information only sends. It is not bidirectional. It sends only to the receiver. That's yes, that's good, that's good. I like to improvise with the idea because GSM module is normally able to set the same right. In this case, you inserted your phone and you use this as some characters like this. Look in the car phone and you yes. so we buy from the yeah. shop. So, this is a good idea to, to conduct strides. So, this is a good idea. Do you have another question? <laughs> Let me add one, one more question on the demonstration. If you look at the positions of the eye axis in the robot, if you place in the front of the, uh, the machine or the robot, right? So that means it only sits in the front side. No. It's What if the fire is at the back or at the side of the mobile robot? Uh. That's that's the maybe our uh, so uh, we use GSM in order to uh, control mm -hmm. that one also. No, no. The ports are very, very narrow, so the vehicle go in the one directions, yeah. then it sends the files in this side or in that side. Uh, even your uh, spray hole also fits it. It's not protected. Three hundred sixty degrees. Because we use a it's not slippery. It's not from water. So if it's fixed, you should put this IR sensor in four dimensions. This frame sensor detect, you can turn left, turn right, and follow the direction. Was it backward to the right? This one in the front side. No, to the right, to the right. The front side is one sensor. So this sensor will be. Let's look at the direction. ወደዚህ <laughs> Uh, in order to uh, extinguish the backward uh, when, the, when there is a presence of uh, fire on the backward, we use only uh, uh, another water pump. But at this time, uh, we uh, intended to show you uh, how we uh, take the fire and uh, extinguish the fire automatically and uh, eliminate the disaster of uh, firefighters uh, during the firefighting uh, work. They consider also the, uh, the wind conditions. What? The wind condition. Uh, no, the wind, uh, other environmental conditions doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't matter for this. No, no, you cannot achieve uh, your target if you pump to other side if the wind speed is very strong. Right? Mm -hmm. So you cannot completely uh, 
part, the existing part, right? For zero? Yeah, yeah. But it's a four-wheel drive. It's balanced. The mass balance of the system is already organized. No, no, uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that on the, the physical structures of the robot. My, my doubt is in the, 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 the liquid you spray on the fire. Yeah. If the, it's windy or it's windy, you cannot achieve directly the target. I will control, control the, all the variety of the environment. So, if I wrote it, uh, servo motor. Yeah. The servo motor uh, rotates uh, the zero degree to uh, 180 degree and sprays the water. Okay. Is what we were saying is, um, what if the wind direction is towards to the, uh, the, the water amount? Okay. So, at that time, if you uh, dispense the water or pump the water to, to that, Direction, it, it is not going to be uh, reach the target area. Yeah. There was a flame chaser, the flame chaser only detects the fire okay. target area. Okay, the other part of the has its own. Let me go to my question. Thank you. Slide. Uh, PowerPoint. Go to slide number uh, 14. <coughs> yeah, one four. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is, you said, this is flow chart, right? Yeah. yeah and, uh, but you are used only two symbols in this flow chart. Uh, three symbols of the transit. The start limit and uh, some activities. Yes, one. But there are a lot of decisions, right? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of uh, decisions that, that have to be made. And uh, you didn't show that in the flow chart. Engineers are expected to use uh, graphical language better than any other uh, individuals. But this project is not a project for me. The logical chart may be uh, put on the PPT. Yes, yeah. you know, there's, there's no means, there's a decision, right? Yeah. It's, so it's a have to use, You have to use a, a symbol, for example. For example, logical. rotating file has to be what? Some uh, presence, uh, presence yeah. or not? Yeah. Is Anyways, there a presence? This, this is not a project for me. And, uh, another, there is, one, uh, another one is, what if uh, the robot is self-caught by fire? Like when you are fighting a fire, maybe the fire can be, uh, the robot can be caught by the fire for a battle. Uh, yeah. 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 That's right. Uh, we were suggesting for that purpose, in order to uh, eliminate the danger of the two the robots when there is a when there is increase of uh, fire to fire uh, the increase in the fire it takes the to the receiver receiver scientists oh. another uh, firefighter so <coughs> increasing the firefighters that maybe uh, coding is uh, and another question is is it well, what is the source of the source of energy of this device source the source, source the first one five volt the five volt to Arduino and the nine volt to be on the remote. That's all? Yeah, eight point four for the wheel. The is, is, is that enough to carry the the water control for the wheel? This is not actual This is not a actual This is not a This is the same. So, how, how, how many letters of what I do see? On the limitation, uh, we put on the limitation. 
10 minutes for slide presentation, 12 minutes for demonstration, and uh, we have 15 minutes for question and answer. Uh, when two minutes left during presentation time, you will get into question, and uh, when four minutes left during demonstration time, you will get also into question. Now, I'll start. The floor is open. Thank you very much. Mm. Today we would like to present our undergraduate senior project, which is the digitally transformed ecosystem using central identity platform. What inspired us to start this huge project is shoot for the moon. If you miss, you will not have the stars. We have so many problems in our daily lives, challenges. Say, if you want to use a service from an institution such as this uh, very campus, you have to have, you need to have an ID. Say, you can say, you can take banks. If you want to get an account, you need to have an ID, digital identity or any identification card that you ably provide. So, all this, all this you can see, is just to identify me from my uh, different institutions. Only if we take this one, the Kabbalah government ID, it can have all the necessary information that all this, uh, this IDs can have. So what if we change all of this into this one? Probably I might add passports uh, in the next month. So uh, can, uh, So what we are proposing is that Identity first approach to create a digitally connected data. When we say data, that's the core part, that's the center of everything that we have uh, in our life. Identity, identity is kept under the hood of data. For instance, you can take yourselves, say, if I make your uh, bank account, what will happen? If I know that data, what will what will happen? It makes us insecure to have our private data into the wrong hands, right? So, data is the most essential part. Why, if, uh, why we uh, are focused on identification or uh, the SSA? We have inspired by these two countries, those two very countries. The first one is America. America is the first one to start the social security number uh, in 1936 just to identify their, uh, their nationalities over their country. But now they're using it for just uh, provide the, uh, what, can, what I can say, in our context. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much, patient. Uh, they're paying the patient for their uh, nation, uh, citizens using their social security number. And the other one is Estonia. Estonia, 15 years ago, she, they haven't even using uh, started the social security number. After that, they have been really revolutionized by uh, different sectors. For example, they have e-voting system. They have successfully uh, voted voting system in 2016, if, I, if I'm not wrong. Uh, now they have even uh, improved no fee uh, public transportation in the their financial uh, increase, uh, their financial income has been increased so far. Why is this thing? If we use social security number for different uh, platforms in our country, 
we can improve the life of our citizens. Uh, just uh, to show, we can have uh, business transactions, uh, including uh, signing contracts using online document uh, signing and verification. Uh, we can uh, even uh, make our transaction online. So our existing system have different problems. Among them, data security, uh, data loss, and uh, document forgery and time loss in every uh, services. While implementing our projects, we have selected four different sectors and then implemented them. The, um, the first one is the core. The center part is the central identity platform, which is different than among uh, the rest of the sectors. The first one is the education sector. Mostly, uh, as you can see, current people have a problem of rights different across uh, our country. Because of that, we have lost so many data, students' data, even uh, in the higher education. So, uh, retrieving that would be the uh, most painful uh, process. The other one is the finance. I myself have been uh, trying to find a better job. And then I, will, I wanted to apply on Upwork for uh, remote jobs. Then what happened? Uh, my Upwork accounting and then my financial accounting has lost much. So upper account couldn't verify me, and then I couldn't get a job. So what I what I did is I go to a branch uh, that I opened my account, and then when I asked them, uh, it took them like a week uh, just to change my Mrs. Pay name. Uh, so it is the other problem. The other one is the police sector problem. Say if somebody committed. Uh, criminal activity in Atusa or maybe whatever you like and then they come to Addis Ababa, they will have their own unique identity and then forge it unique identity and then they can leave. So this is another problem because uh, the police sector have the papers database uh, system and uh, they have the spreadsheets uh, local database which takes time to access the data. The other one is the medical system. My father, uh, two years ago, had been diagnosed with a stomach problem. And then uh, when he go to the hospital that he gets made uh, surgery 18 years back, uh, what they say was, since we don't have your medical data now, from back uh, 18 years ago, uh, we can give you a medication, uh, which is the surgery. Since they didn't know the surgery procedure from that year, they couldn't uh, go on other uh, further procedures. So this is the biggest uh, issue that we can uh, encounter in our life. So the major problem of the system, the existing system, is that it's slow posting time. It uh, cause and encourage a lot of frauds in our country. Our statement of the problem, how do we improve life of Ethiopians using their identity? Because everything is based on identity, identifying us everywhere academic institutions, bank institutions, you can name it what you like. And then the other ones, uh, everybody is digitizing themselves, even the banks, the, uh, the medical institutions, and so on. During that, what will happen is, say, if uh, someone have name, uh, last name, first name, differently in their database, and say, if the, somebody have just full name, which takes the, uh, up to grandfather's name, when we wanted to integrate their data, when we wanted to share data, that would be a problem. So uh, we need just one central system to organize this, and then we will uh, share data using our SSA. The other one is data security and confidentiality. We have, uh, say, if we have 10 different uh, platforms, we have to worry about 10 different security issues. But if we centralize that one into one, central system, we will have to worry about that one system. So, uh, what? Four, two minutes. Oh, okay. So, we will eliminate the time sampling implication, interoperability of data. Our objective is to create a central identity platform through web applications. We have, we will provide API. We have implemented four different systems. And, yes. Okay. Uh, our, scope, our scope is in, basically in Addis Ababa, but we will uh, move if we have the uh, possibility. The feasibility is uh, we're going to build our uh, infrastructure on cloud, uh, which uh, is located in uh, Addis Ababa. We used prominent industrial technologies 
It can be easily used by anyone who for nervous users. Uh, we wanted to revolutionize access to services of the city, the country, by connecting institutions to the need of citizens. Beneficiaries, citizens, government sectors, and businessmen. Uh, our functional requirements, managing citizen identity, uh, enabling e-sign across sectors, and digital document verification. We have implemented open authentication protocol, which Google uses uh, for uh, using by uh, for be just to be used by other sectors. Uh, the other one is facilitating proper sharing of complex data across different organizational schemes, sharing data among sectors. We have implemented this. We can show you uh, while uh, demonstration. We have, uh, as you can see, here is our combined system diagram. We have CIMS, cloud infrastructure. Uh, that is possible. What we inspired by uh, our visits in last internship is we have some data center in Ethiopia, which is located at the ICT park. So it will uh, help us to implement our system, make it scalable, it will be secure, reliability, and it will be accessible for all over the country. So now uh, the floor is open for the session. Okay. Uh, thank you for this fabulous presentation. And I'm going to be continuing with the implementation section. I'm going to be skimming over it extremely fast. So I'll keep up. Okay. This is a central identity management system. As you can see, this is the dashboard of the system. I'm logged in as an admin. There is like 15 citizens uh, registered uh, under our system, seven applications, and five institutions. Like Nova, we mentioned four of them, like the uh, health, uh, medical, uh, medical uh, educational, uh, finance, and police sectors. This is the personal data of the user. We keep the personal data of the user as such, and we're going to use this SSL and password to open uh, to facilitate the all the process of the uh, whole systems and ecosystem. Uh, and the, this, seg this section is registration section. The citizens must be registered. Uh, I'm not going to be entering data, but let's see, you, you register a citizen right over here. This is a government part of the job. And as you can see here, many citizens. The many citizen in the many citizen section, uh, there are users like the registered users. And if they, for example, if I click on Nikasionas, uh, Nikasionas is a black haired, black, uh, black eyed guy, uh, and his full data is right over here. Uh, the second one, the second one that, that uh, I would like to emphasize is this part: the managed institutions. The managed institution section, section will manage uh, our institutions, like Nova uh, mentioned, Nova mentioned earlier. Uh, we have four uh, institutions. As you can see, here is the police sector, the health sector, financial sector, and educational sectors. Uh, if I open the financial sectors, financial sector have one uh, application under it, Mudai, Mudai Pay. Mudai Pay is like one of the uh, one of, uh, is created by one of our brightest uh, team member, Tam Kim Mangusti, and uh, here it is health, health sector. Health sector is created by me. And educational sector is created by Mavas. Uh, she's presented here. And health sector has like four applications. Uh, all four applications have access to the central identity management system. All four applications authenticate using this central identity management system. Like the open OAuth, I cannot emphasize that enough. Like the open OAuth system is very crucial. Uh, since we used the since we used uh, like the Google and uh, the methodology used by Google and Facebook, uh, security, security-wise, we are not. Uh, I can I can say I can say we are not vulnerable by uh, security attacks. And for example, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna out uh, using my, using Mavas uh, social security number. I'm gonna copy her social security number and I'm gonna log out from the system and. For example, this is the educational uh, sector website. So, if I say this, uh, authenticate with central identity system and insert my SSN, 
and my password. And since I, uh, when I first log in, feel directly back to the central identity system, asking me for the permission of the user data. Maba, if she denies this process, the, the user data will not be transferred from the central identity to the uh, educational sector. And as you can see, I'm now in the educational sector of the uh, our system. Okay. Uh, now the now since I showed you the open authentication and the citizen man citizens and institutions management system, I'm gonna continue with uh, multiple scenarios to demonstrate how our system is useful. Uh, the next, uh, let's say the first scenario would be the, this one. This one will be like for someone who don't know it will will be like another system. But here, first of all, you can authenticate using the social security number as I demonstrated earlier, but I'm not going to be demonstrating that early, uh, now. Uh, and let's say this is uh, this user. This user is a criminal who have been found guilty. So, like, if he try to uh, leave the country or uh, like any uh, like legal, uh, if he try to flee the country with the legal measure, he can't because we catch we catch his data like this. And uh, any anytime anybody like any subsystem wants to access uh, his uh, legal data, he, he can see this. This user is guilty of uh, the crime he is accused of. And another user will be this one. And this one is, uh, he, as you can see right over here, his status is free of charge and he's uh, free. So he can he can leave the country free. Uh, the third example will be this guy. This guy is uh, like accused, but not uh, convicted. I think uh, not. Uh, yeah. So his status will be pending. Okay. The next scenario. The next scenario will be the uh, medical uh, medical sector. Medical sector under the medical sector. I have. Uh, we have implemented the hospital uh, system. So. Uh, the, the hospital system is fully applicable and uh, as I showed you earlier, here is the, the open authentication permission and everything under the, this, here it is, ABTS hospital. ABTS hospital, I can authenticate doctors, uh, patients, everybody who could authenticate using the central identity system. Uh, when I click over this appointment and try to access the mobile medical data, it gives me to fill the SMS. Uh, I'm going to be sending her a short code for her baba. And if she verify the access of the, her, her medical record, she's going to tell me the short code. And I'm going to be inserting it in here and see, see her medical record. But since time is very scarce uh, to present this, I'm going to just be skimming over here and, over here and uh, show you her, her, how, how we are keeping her medical records. Her medical record is kept like this. Her, uh, social security number, her uh, blood type, and everything, like her emergency contact, everything. If she has like uh, serious issues, will be displayed right over here. And this is the medical history that she had earlier from the this sector. For example, let me go to this tab and show you how I'm gonna, here it is, here we can uh, add an additional medical uh, record. For example, for this case, I I filled all the requirement data, and I'm gonna press add the medical record. As you can see, there's an additional medical record for the Navas uh, education health record. Uh, the second scenario will be this one. This one, uh, like she doesn't have to go to hospital to see her medical record. So she just she just she is just gonna go to. Uh, we have our own subsystem for the medical data center. So the medical data center will be okay, no. okay. the medical uh, data system. She is just going to go to the, for the medical data center uh, and accept the authentication form. And uh, she allows me to access her data. As soon as she accepts this, it will direct her and display her medical uh, full information, like she, her, her profile picture and full her uh, medical data. Uh, Right over here, let's say if somebody applies for, uh, here it is, let's say if somebody applies for a, a job 
he, he's going to be asked for, to, for, for his data to, to provide from central identity system. And as soon as he says accept and, and fill his uh, user nickname or like, and press for, for what kind of job he's going to be applying for, and press submit, he'll be presented right over here, like in the application form. On, under the application form, as you can see, mobile zone has applied earlier. Like, uh, I'm not going to show you how the data so that I enter. And here it is, her full name and full data from Central Identity Management System. This is the data from educational sector, from the other sector. So, like, I cannot emphasize this enough. This is from the other sector. And uh, the second, the last scenario would be this one. Uh, I'm going to be repeating it again. Medical, we have a, a third system to manage medical uh, data. It is centralized, locally managed, and un, uh, it's managed by its own, or like it's not uh, dependent on either the Ministry of Health or the in hospitals. Just the this uh, the Ministry of Health will give access for the uh, central data. Thank you for the for your attention. If you have something to say, should gonna continue. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to put it in the middle of the screen, so... Just for a minute. Okay. Just for a minute. Okay. My name is Abhinav. Okay, the last thing, the last subsystem is, I mean, the finance sector. The finance sector, under the finance sector, there's the Mudai app, as you can see. This is the Mudai app, and I'm gonna authenticate. I'm gonna authenticate should not be a uh, way out of the country, we are planning to use the data center in Turkey. So I would like to emphasize on that because we are not going to use AWS or other uh, cloud services. So I think uh, mm -hmm. uh, for some reason my credential is not working. So. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, it was a connection problem. Uh, okay, as you can see right over here, so you don't finish this time. Okay, this is the Mugai landing page. Now the floor is open for question and answer. We have 15 minutes. Okay, so in your documentation, what I am understanding is uh, you are going to use a cloud service to you. Store the data by using Amazon ECT. And that's finished in the last week. Storing this in the moment of the data, the data is receiving the data outside the data. You can see that it is going to come because there is a privacy. So if you store all this data, about the data from last week.
It's not an ecosystem. It must be an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. like, if it is not an ecosystem, a central identity system, a central identity management system cannot be stand alone. It would be just gathering data. If it is, uh, if it is an ecosystem, it would provide more benefit for almost, as you can see, this sector. Uh, we try to demonstrate uh, how it's going to be used under health sector, uh, financial sector. Uh, Almost all educational sector, like, and this is a major problem with the country, the, the project you mentioned. Actually, in this presentation, as also, this blockchain based project, I don't know what is the this What they want to do actually is to make this blockchain online and based on blockchain. So I think you need to do some research what is already in the country. If, if, where you are going to add your value to that. Okay. Okay, my question um, is not to that uh, First of all, what your best software is But it's not clear that you don't need to software as a service or transform as a service. Or it is, it is simply an enterprise resource planning or the so called integrated infrastructure of the best software system. First, uh, your plan on the software as a service uh, architecture system. Because, like, we're going to provide the. First, we're going to register the other sectors and then incorporate the system into ours. So, we're going to provide them a system, uh, software as a service. We cannot provide platform as a service because. 
they will not be able to build their infrastructure or will not be able to provide platforms for them. So, so if it is software as a, as a service, I think um, we have to directly go to the database technology. Uh, so what is the database you have used? Uh, we have used uh, possible database for all uh, systems, but we have different kind of uh, sectors, so we have used different databases, which will be uh, load balanced by the Nginx uh, server, which will be localized by the Kubernetes, uh, which will be localized, and then uh, for... Uh, I would love to show you how to uh, do this. Uh, we haven't um, put it right here, but Right here, and then when it comes to the other system, they will have to be uh, passed through this. So, 
Islam will be too late. That clock is representing the center of the city system. The clock is representing the internet system that you have seen, right? The GDM. Yeah. So this is the balance of the internet system. At the moment, we have the index 200, all of this load balancing. Right? They have to pass through the central energy system, right? So where is it? It's a good job to see where is the central energy system. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First, they come to the interface, and then when this uh, request will meet the engineering server, and then it will uh, respond, and then if it passed, it will go to the other settings. Okay? Mm -hmm. Why is it? Don't care what kind of database 
is our uh, education sector is using. It's just like the same uh, this uh, education sector with the health sector is sent request to the uh, the sector management management system so the API provided and it will be balanced with the dedication. Just one more question uh, before you talk about this because this is going to be some sensitive. Okay. Information, right? Yes. You have some sort of high availability or redundancy or yeah. data replication, how you are going to be providing. I haven't seen anything of the broker here, why you need to broker, how you are going to manage that to brokerize instances, you are going to deploy Kubernetes or cloud lab. Those things maybe you need to think over it on the next presentation. The other is uh, open authentication is just for authorization, okay? Yeah. It is not for authentication on top of that. You may need some or open ID authentication. Authorization and authentication is different, right? Yeah, actually, it's happening now. Okay.
car accidents might occur during the use process. So drivers who couldn't find parking space cause traffic congestion by parking on the roadside. Uh, traffic congestion is that the problem that we have faced in everyday activity, in our everyday activity. I personally faced this problem uh, when I want to move from Adama City to Adisaba City. Uh, the, the, the time it took me to travel 67 um, kilometers, which is the highway, it took me like 40 minutes, maximum 40 minutes. When I reached the exit gate of the, the highway road, in order to reach my, my, my hometown, Kisawa in uh, Ato, yeah, city, it took me like two hours due to the traffic congestion. It took me two hours to cover the 37 kilometers. So this is the major problem due to traffic congestion. So, uh, and the other uh, report that we have seen, the other studies that we have seen uh, by researching through the documents is that due to the traffic congestion, and tra uh, people will <coughs> lose, lose their lives. So studies show that more than 4,000 people will die due to car accidents in 2020. Yes. These accidents cause major burden in problem on social, economic, and health sectors in our country. So, in order to solve these problems, we have presented a project which is a parking area. This parking area helps us to car our parts uh, rather than on the road. It has its own building, so uh, drivers or owners can park their cars with using a small area parking area, so uh, with, using a small area we can park many cars, so it has very advanced So the problem statement is that the number of vehicles used in urban settlement has increased in the available parking systems, so it's our reception to park these vehicles. So the objectives are, the general objective is to design and implementation of uh, automatic elevator car parking system. The specific objectives are uh, to design overview of the system with protein simulation. The, these are the process that we have used in this project. Uh, to control thermometer for the gate of the parking system that you will see in the implementation section. To monitor elevator of parking system using safer dismantlers. So <clears throat> what makes our project significant? The significance of this project is that it enhances the capacity of parking. When we compare it to the traditional parking system, the traditional parking system uses a large area to park cars. So this uh, project has provided, by using a small area that vehicles, many number of vehicles can be car parked by using small parking area. So the other significant is that it enhances its security of parking. One of the things that car owners or uh, uh, car owners face is that when the road or uh, when they park on the par uh, the, the roadways they will have the fear of robbery so their cars might be robbed their car parts might be robbed spooky or something many people fear that their car might be stolen so this project has its own security advancement so it enhances the security of the park the, the other thing that is save time reduce fuel consumption reduce manpower since it's, it's automatically working, it uses small level manpower. So the limitation, uh, uh, the, the limitations that we have faced while doing this project is that uh, integrating the mechanical system with the electrical components is one of the big problems that we have faced while doing this project. The other thing is yeah, the impact of friction in other constraints since we are using the mechanical parts friction and the other constraints has limited us to fully uh, fulfill our objectives. So the other thing, the system design and the other things will be presented by my friend. And also we had uh, some feature, uh, which is if the customer gets the same message when he is parking, 
this is, we are using uh, simple motors, DC motors, people, uh, Mercedes, uh, all the good uh, the circuit systems, things like this. And uh, in this project, uh, when we see the system operation, how the system is working, as the first, the, when the system starts, it shows the starting, the welcoming, the updates, and the, after the LCD will activate, and the, also the keypad will be activated. And uh, it, uh, if the customer wants, what, what, what is the customer wants? If you want to park, he press the star key. And when he wants to exit a car, he press the hash key. And it uh, process the input. And two minutes. Two minutes. Hi, two minutes. Okay. Okay. Only two minutes. It processes the input. If the customer wants to park the car, the, uh, the, process, the system asks him a password. And today we using GSM machine, it asks the phone number and the, uh, at phone, when he enters the phone number, the system gives, uh, it generates a password for uh, authentication security purpose. And when he enters that password, the servo motor or the gate will be opened and he can park his car. And if he enters the uh, wrong password, the system will reverse to at the back end of the system. It is all about the system operation diagram. Actually, uh, uh, the completion part, we can park many vehicles using this more parking system in our project. And also, uh, using this different systems, uh, the parking system or the customers has a, uh, it is safe for uh, about, about his car park. He can park his car without any accident. And we recommend that uh, if the system is in a task of data, uh, we can turn it for the, for the next time. If we make it in a task of data, it will be. And also, uh, we simulate or the scope is only for small cars or uh, vehicles. Maybe if the parking system is used for uh, different cars, uh, like uh, we call that one is a big, it will be better. Uh, this is all about the project. Thank you. Now the floor is open for the demonstration. You have 12 minutes. And I will, I will give you a notification when 4 minutes is left, okay? When 4 minutes is left, I will give you a notification. Okay. To wrap up the demonstration, okay? Is welcome as to car parking as a part of this display. And uh, as a sample, we take only the screen sources. It says we have three sources, three sources. And uh, we have Star key. And when we press the star key, it asks a phone, the user's phone number. Uh, currently, uh, maybe we may train a phone number if the JCM is working, but it waits, it's not that much fast. Let's check uh, can we read your phone number, someone's phone number, if it gives a single switch. It. Thank you. 
Then when we enter the phone number, the system asks the verification number whether he is this phone number his or uh, maybe if he make an incorrect phone number, the system verifies whether he got a uh, verification number or not. But still the JCM working with us at uh, night time, we are sending uh, exchange the verification number. Uh, is this OTP or one time password? Or? We, we, we use it like a time. Uh, it's one time. It generates the system generates password at JCM, it's and so when it yeah, this one is this one time only. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can enter yeah. because it sends the verification code, and uh, it's it's also sends the password when the customer wants to retry his card. He you must put uh, his password. That's when the password. Okay. Uh, the JSIM generates password automatically randomly. And uh, at the first time, when it, before it starts giving a verification number, the first number is the same. The JSIM will generate password. We will come to the question and answer. The horizontal lift is the stepper motor it doesn't work. After it <laughs> after it works. Then add the first the slot number three, and now automatically the slot number will decrease. Uh, it says we have two slots, and if you want to exit, shall we proceed to the next uh, drink or shall we have time? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Let's start again. It says uh, incorrect verification number because I enter randomly the verification number. When I enter the exact number, the, the exact verification number, after not the verification, the password that the system generates when the car is parking, the JC module sends the 
for the customer usage. Yes. 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 <laughs> Your password. Sorry. It's in the same sense like your password is easy here. Please don't share this code with anyone or save it in your mind and delete from um, here. Thanks. Like this message. And uh, last time it sent the same message uh, 6638. Let's check this number. You have four minutes. Okay. Now the pin says the pin is correct. Uh, look the lift. Yeah. 
He picked the vehicles and he moved toward our side yeah. until the free slot he got, right? Yeah. But you should check first uh, which which slot is free. Uh, based on that, you based on that uh, you can monitor the uh, movements of the lift, right? Yes. It's not always mean close to the upper floor. You may have free slot in the low. You may have free slot in the middle, or you may have toward that side free slot. So the first task should be check the weight of the vehicle. If it's within the lower range. You should check the free slot next, then you can send signal for the, uh, the, the, the lift to bring the car to that side. I expect this thing. But uh, I don't see this one. Uh, yeah, uh, but about the weight of the car, yeah, you are right. Uh, when you didn't include that, the weight of the car, uh, it, it's not included in this project. But the uh, number of slots, the system works sequentially. At the first, uh, we are, as the first, we told that we assume only there are three free slots, and uh, we take uh, 13, 14, 15 like that. Uh, so it, the system are, uh, takes uh, sequentially, it starts from the horizontal, and if the horizontal is full, it could go to the first floor. Uh, let me, we can check, we can change to it starts from. If the first one floor. of those bags went to yeah. uh, uh, exit in meantime, Mm. That float is free. So, uh, do you mean all the slots are full of bag? We assume here now yeah. only three slots are free. The upper... We can change it to. Yeah, so. yeah, really if in the meantime someone wants to exit from the, the middle floor, uh, that slot should be free if he exits from that, that, that float. Then, if someone comes. In the meantime, you should bring the car to that side, not count in sequential. If you go in that way, that's wrong. That's wrong. Because uh, we, we, why not? If you take it sequential, if you take the car sequentially, it saves time. For example, if there is a free slot at the ground, why he go to the second floor? It starts from the ground. It searches and it the ground. All the vehicle stays within these stations uh, constant time. Someone takes. 20 minutes here, someone takes all the day to here. Mm -hmm. So that means the free slot is, uh, uh, we got free slot random, not sequential. Yeah, uh, first of all, it will uh, park it sequentially, like uh, the first floor, we will park it. Then when uh, someone <coughs> wants to exit the f from the first floor, the floor he will uh, exit and it will come to it will come back to the sequential state. He will fill it with the car. Do you, do you get it? So do you mean the checking mechanism starts sequentially? From, yeah. From the ground it will go to the upper class. Then it will display it has three free slots. Yeah. Okay. okay. But the, the marking system it will start parking from the ground. In checking that only it will display the free slot, not the uh, where Yeah, in addition to this, uh, I see the main gate is still open until the car is slotted to the, 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 the slot port, right? The main gate? The main gate is open. Uh, this is not. Right. Once the car is past the main gate, it should be closed until the next uh, vehicle is coming. But what we see from this experiment is it's open until the car is inserted to the uh, slots. Right. Okay. Okay. Next question. How can we give back the car? Hmm? Getting back the car. I, I, I don't show the procedure to get back the car from the slot to the seat. Exit. Yeah. How can we? You are showing? Yeah. How uh, can we the person, if, if, if the person wants to take his car out, then uh, the display will welcome uh, to us to assess it. Us to car parking system. So if you want to exit your car out, Press the hash key. So when he enters the hash key, it will ask him the password that he gave him when he enters the car. So 
when he puts the password, the, the car will come automatically. And then and he, he takes you, the car. You also enter the uh, slot number, what he, his car is parking. How, how do you know the slot number? He will tell him that uh, when the password... When the car, the car park it in, he knows the slot number. How, how, how you know? When the verification code uh, enters to the person's phone number... My assumption is the driver is not uh, alone with the car yes. to get into the spot. He's on the ground. Right? Yes. yes. The driver is on the ground. Yes. So how the system notify the driver uh, okay, at the exit time, when the customer needs to exit, uh, at the first, when he enters the car, the system tells him the slot number and the password. After that, after he parks the car, and when he exits, the system asks him the password and the slot number. And finally, it brings the car from that slot and uh, it uh, tells the total cost and the total time how much how much time it was there in the park. So, was it any mechanical device that takes the car from the slot and uh, brings to the elevator and the elevator has to bring it down? Yeah, it is the same way as a uh, car when it enters into the slot. Because uh, the path is the same when if you go two steps horizontal and four steps vertical. And also when he wants to exit the car, it goes the same way as like the entering the bus. Okay. Uh, how is the price is going to be calculated? Because uh, in the documentation I saw here uh, uh, some kind of inflated price. Yeah. Is that the real, the, the real price? For one, one forty-two minutes it is... Uh, Actually, we didn't take any data, only randomly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing he already asked us here, uh, he didn't explain what is the difference between the smart uh, park system and the IDs. I think so, it, but I got that for it. There is a smart uh, car parking system. What is the difference between the other one and your design? Okay, uh, as a first, uh, when you do from the PPT, the scope is in Ethiopia. Not only in Addis, there are advanced parking systems uh, all over the world. Uh, and also in Addis Ababa, I think around Maganaya, uh, there is an automatic car parking system. Uh, the first thing what we wanted to show is uh, I, that project is done by uh, China government, I think. It's not by Ethiopians. Uh, the first one is we can't do it here without a, any uh, other person. We can show like that. And also I hear that the system works using uh, ID card. The, the person who has a car, uh, that ID card can use unless anyone can park uh, car, car, any car right there. But here, any user can park his car. You just have to pay the money, so you don't have to use the card. The password is only the necessary thing that you get. You understand me? Is that a big deal not to use ID card? Yeah, if you are not registered, then you cannot park the system, that system. But here, anytime you can come, any customer can come and park his cars. Anytime. In addition to that, it only parks nine cars. The floor takes nine. In our project, it can be multiple. The numbers can be three. Okay, why, why you call it automatic elevator? What do you mean by automatic elevator? The title itself, it says automatic elevator. We think that is, we know that it is automatic. Okay. Why, you, why you mention it? It's automatic elevator. Okay, as uh, the name indicates, the, the, the automatic system is the elevator one. Traditionally, the driver parks himself by taking his car. But in the system, the elevator is automatic. No need of the driver to park here. Okay. 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 Maybe, <coughs> uh, as you imagine, maybe how, how this can be implemented. For example, like a for 
some institutional issue, okay, who will fund you to implement this issue. Yeah. Do you think you can win to implement it in the real context? Yes, yes. I think we think that <coughs> the parking slot uh, in especially in urban areas is the basic problem that we are facing in our country. So uh, I think this is a very crucial issue for our country, especially in Addis Ababa or great uh, urban cities. So I think it's a fatal issue in our country. Yeah, if you see the problem is right, but what if, for example, <coughs> the administration says, okay, we want this implement for us in large scale, everything, because he said we can do it without ourselves, right? Yes. So, you think you can, you can be given some sort of budget? Yeah. Yeah. With the advancement of uh, the equipment that we can get and uh, further searching and acquiring knowledge, we can. Okay, another question is, uh, the password is, where, where is this? Is there a computer or something? Because... There is a keypad over there. Okay, keypad. Yes. To enter. Yes. My question is, Password needs to be stored, right? When the guy comes back, like, yeah. where is the record? The Arduino has the memory. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, the last one is mine. And, um, on your document, you have mentioned that the limitation of uh, limitation mm. and the limitation, you have mentioned that some difficulties. Yes. Yeah. Difficulties are not limitation. Limitation means the limitations that your product that your product will have when it's in operation, okay? Yeah. Like lifting a high load or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that. But you have said uh, motor issue, uh, some uh, uh, friction issue, something yeah. like that. That's difficult, not limitation. Oh. Challenges. Challenges. And uh, the other one is he already uh, uh, just mentioned. Where did this information is going to be stored in the web? From where uh, this um, verification code is generated? You have some some sort of database? Uh, yeah, the Arduino has uh, its own memory. It, it can store the password, and uh, the, it, it also uh, generates the password. Can you say anything? Arduino by default, it will generate uh, some random number. Is, as you think uh, JST module? And the way that data is going to be stored for inside, permanent. Inside it, yeah. Permanent. Yeah, inside it's a uh, new model. Uh, for, uh, for this project, the password is stored in this Arduino. But when we take another big parking system, terms, it has its own data center. Okay. And, uh, so that is the future work. Yes. This is only and when you have mentioned that there is a payment limit, right? Yes. Yeah. But we didn't solve that payment limit. Because you have built this because of the, uh, the parking system in Addis um, is only uh, possible through card. And uh, you are, uh, your project or your product is able to park cars based on uh, verification and the payment. So we didn't solve that payment limit. We can show. Have you incorporated the payment method? It will display the, the amount. Just it will display the, the sum number like uh, Dr. Say, 160 per. That number is not constant, but the cost is right. I know, I know. Uh, the user will see the, the amount number, yeah. then how he is going to pay. Just or he will see, okay, okay. I will pay something. <laughs> Maybe there is some one person. Yeah. 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 So the payment method uh, is one um, uh, uh, one problem. In, uh, when you take back the car, mm -hmm. I think this is fixed, right? The slot are fixed. Yes. How the car is going to be sliced into the the elevator? Okay. How the car is going to be sliced? To the elevator. Okay. We have seen that how the car is sliding to the slot. Uh -huh. And that even on that, in that case, in that case, the car may hit the wall of uh, the slot. Yeah. Yeah. 
have you yeah, uh, we, tried to conquer such problems? Yeah, we were thinking about that. Uh, if the slider is like you think it has a free area, like a finger, and also the slot area here, the car will not sit only on the slot. There will be a, a, some things that the car will be enter. And when the custom, the system uh, wants to park the car, it is that the two like finger steps will be close together and it will park the car. Okay, yeah. exactly. What we can to do? My, mm -hmm. my last question is power issue. What if uh, power is off? Uh, I, the system is arcing or taking some car. Power cut. If there is a power cut, the system is uh, acting as a car or taking a car. Okay, if we come to the real world, there will be generator or other systems. Okay. Uh, but it is only a good type of this. And uh, you have to think about the questions that Mr. Tamro asked you previously. Uh, and the doctor also mentioned that question how the user will identify uh, his, where his car is. Parked in which specific slot? Uh, it, will explain, it will explain uh, when the, uh, the the customer enters his car, it will tell him the password and where the car is slotted. It will okay. tell him the slot number. In, in a sem uh, yes, it will, in, yes. yeah. you will get a SMS notification. Yes, yeah. when he wants to exit his car, he asks the password that he gave him and before in the slot number. So uh, the two things are given in a sketch. Thank you.